Oh, Father, we cry out, Lord of the harvest, oh God, raise up laborers, just like Jesus, raise up laborers with power and authority, oh God, with healing in their hands, with the authority of the life of your word in their, in their mouth and in their spirit. Father, let your glory break in this place. Let your glory break in this place. Father, your mercy, let your glory break in this place. Oh God. Father, in your mercy, let your blood take hold of cleansing every life oh god those oh lord that do not know how to be cleansed tonight i pray father that they would be taught by you father those that tonight might be in this place that don't know how to walk free from sin tonight i pray they'll learn those that do not know how to yield to you holy spirit we pray father god in your grace that they'll learn they'll be taught of you they'll be able to father Every hindrance removed uh, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord, we praise your holy name. I am washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb. And my God, Men's are spotless, they are white than snow. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. Thank you for this blood that cleanses me. From all sin, thank you for your blood that cleanses me from all sin. Lord, thank you for your blood that cleanses me. Thank you for your blood that cleanses me. Thank you for your blood that cleanses me from all sin. Ora ma mandera ma manda no 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 mangera jele ma mangera mande ma monore ne stere de be manange mando o male ne basu to lo mombera ne nale ne Gora man em brani la man jolo no mandu no man ber mani sotto rebelo Mamma mana sanani Kiri mamma mamma mando lo mukare Kiri sta no 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 mander mamma Mamma, 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 mamma
Sing the spiritual song with me. Sing the spiritual song with me. Mahaya la la mahaya na na mahaya na na haya hala. Kura ma mahaya la la mahaya na na haya na na hoya hala. Kura ma mahaya la mungela. Kura ma ma ne heya na heya na heya. Kuri mungela ha na heya. Kuri sai ni ni heya. Kuri ma ma mungela na na mungeli ha heya ma ma na haya. Ma ma mungeli ni ha ne heya. Ujala na mungeli na haya na haya. Haya da heya sha na haya. Haya sai na haya. Higher in the sun, higher. 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 Higher Hana mana ni ana na hana ni asana ni he ana ni ana na haya. Hurra na na he ana ni ana na hana ni ana na haya. Hurra mana ni ana hai ni 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 ana ni ana hana ni ana ni ana ano. Hala ni ana na ni ana he ana na ni ana na na hana. Na ni ni ana ni ana ni ana ni ana na mahana ni ano. Ma ana na na ma ana ni ana ni ana ma ana ni ana ni ana ni ana ni ana. So hala mi ni ana ni ma ana ni ana na ole. So hala mi ni ni ana ni na ana na na. So hala mi na ni ana na na ana. So hala mi ma ni ana na na ana na na ya. Sorry, be a rebel, man. I'm not a man. I'm not a fool. Sahana, I'm not a man. Sahana, I'm not a man. I'm not a man. I'm not a man. Ha ha ha. Sahana, I'm not a man. Sahana, I'm not a man. I'm not a man. I'm not a man. I'm not a man. Sahana, I'm not a man. Sahana, I'm not a man. I'm not a man. I'm not a man. I'm not a man. Sahana ni ane ne ne o, sahana ni ane ma ne. Sahana ni mi ane ne ne o, la ma na gor ma ma ni ane na ya. Sahana ni ane ne ne o, sahana ni ane ne ne. Sahana ni ane ne ne o, ma 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 ne ni ane ne ne la. Kur ma 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 ne ne ma ne la ma ni ni. Ha ha. Kala mama ne yala lala boho ya, sabri ne mama ne yala mama ya, sahala mi yame de, ru mama lala lala boso, ru mama maya, kini ni ana na ne yala ni ne ya, ha ha ha. Sorry, bebe 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 ne, mama mama na 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 me ne ya na, oh, ru mama ru bebe ru bebe, ru bebe 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 galeri galeri. Kira bebe 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 yala bebe bebe. Hallelujah. <laughs> Rabbi, give me the money, 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 the money
You can have this or you can have religion. You can have this, this realm where the spirit of the living God be very, very careful what you say and what you do right now. Be very careful. Holy Spirit is here. And every one of us want to do nothing other than completely yield ourselves entirely to Him right now. You want to yield yourself entirely to Him right now. It is out of this realm of being hooked up with the Holy Spirit that everything that God wants to be manifested in your life and in this earth to represent Jesus Christ springs forth from. Until you learn how to function in this realm, you will remain limited almost as much as a little baby is limited in a crib. Limited from being able to do all the things that were possible for that child, that person to grow in and mature into by virtue and by right of being born a human being. In like manner, you and I were born of the Holy Spirit to learn how to walk in the Holy Spirit. And if there's anything that God's people have got to realize is that the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, everything that belongs to a world of unholy desires war against this wonderful realm of divine glory. And if you would be willing to walk in the Spirit, if you would be willing, in other words, because this is an equivalent phrase, to put on Christ Jesus, to put Him on, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof, you would, def you would begin to find yourself being continually strengthening, strengthened, being strength strengthened by the Holy Ghost in your inner being, Every day finding yourself stronger to do the things that only 
those who are anointed of the Holy Ghost and have matured in that realm are able to do. Now the Lord graces us. You can be seated. The Lord graces us with abilities. He graces us with answered prayers. He graces us with visitations, if you would, with moving of the Spirit. And then we have, you know, people have revival time. They have a moment in time on a meeting night where they feel like they've just been touched by God and they're so happy and wonderful. And then they just go on living their ordinary everyday life with no real adjustment and no real change taking place to really hook up with what God in His grace and His mercy allowed them to experience in that moment. Father wants to take you and use you so long as you're in this life with every wonderful and beautiful thing, but if you're preoccupied with this world and with the cares of this life, you will never grow and you will never mature. So go ahead and write that down today. Because I can prophesy to you right now, you will never grow and you will never mature until the day you resign yourself to holy living for God. And I'm not talking about some religious ideology. I'm talking about living and walking in the Spirit. Oh, you understand, dear people, demon spirits can't give God praise. Uh, you understand that? I, that would be really easy. I'm going to tell you right now, people who have allowed unholy things in their life through the day, they can't give them praise either. But I've got a remedy. You can immediately be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ if you know how to take a hold of these things. But reality of it is, this is what I know. Until you grow and mature in the Spirit, you are held under a place of some form of deception and you don't even know how to take a hold of the blood of Jesus Christ and apply it. Why? Because people in every different walk of life will begin to justify the way that they're living in the state that they're in and there won't be a broken and contrite heart which is a prerequisite to taking the blood of Jesus Christ and applying it to the life. And so, therefore, you're limited. You don't know how to step in to this realm of divine glory. And I'm going to minister to you tonight on the very heart of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to help you to understand that the Lord Jesus was crucified. He came here. He lived a perfect life, holy and acceptable unto God, was examined for three years, just like a sacrifice is examined before it's offered up to the Lord, showed himself to be the only begotten Son of God by the spirit of power and by the spirit of holiness, was offered up on an altar of sacrifice that the Father built poured out his blood, died and was buried, rose up again the third day for the, re, for the sole purpose of you and I being able to now be born of the Spirit, joined under the Spirit and live by the Spirit. And that's not some mystical, esoteric concept of religion. That's where you and I begin to allow the Holy Ghost to dominate and rule our lives. And I'm telling you, that's very different from the natural existence that the majority of people who occupy the chairs of the church live. So I want you to understand that I am talking about you. Because if I say majority, then that's the majority wherever you're at. And so, therefore, people have relegated themselves to living as babes. And then Satan comes along with that in his religious strategy, and he confirms your state and your position, because then people want to make fun of the things of the Holy Ghost. They want to make, they want to try to, um, you know, uh, basically criticize a person who's going to live every day for Jesus and walk every day in the realms of his divine power and grace and glory and live out a life that's truly heavenly. And, you know, therefore you've got it coming and going, don't you? You really do. You've got all these things that you've got to do, supposedly. 
I'm telling you right now. Uh, I watch how people get all wrapped up trying to do things for God. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I was, I'm just so blessed we had Deborah, Deborah O here from um, South Korea, and she doesn't really, you know, she doesn't like me talking about all that she does and who she, what, who she is and who she's, you know, what, what things God has used her in while she's here, but, you know, she's gone now. You know, and, you know, and I'm just so blessed that she wanted me to be on her oversight board. Everybody's on her oversight board. My goodness, Michael Brown from Pensacola, Florida. You, I mean, just the list goes on. It's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous, great list. I mean, it's a great list of, of wonderful people. She's, she knows everybody. The Lord's used her in, in a mighty and a wonderful way. But, you know, I was just expressing to her yesterday. I said, listen, hold up. You, you, look, just rest. Just stop. And it's not, not your ministry. It's not your business. I mean, you're supposed to learn how to be converted, be like a little child, just with total abandonment and serve Jesus. Let him take care of everything. Just have fun. And, you know, uh, and, and uh, fortunately, she's mature enough to be able to hear it and understand it and then go ahead and take hold of it and walk in it. Because there, there is no way that you're going to do much for God when you always bring, ring in your hands about every little thing that's going on because it's, it's all your concern. Ultimately, the Lord brings us into a place of resting in him. He brings us in a place of total trust and total confidence in him. He's doing the work. It's his ministry. I don't have, I don't have to hang on to nothing. I don't have to put nothing together. No, all I'm just going to do, I'm going to be faithful to do what God's called me to do. I'm going to tell you what God's called you to do. God's called you to walk in the Spirit. He's called you to take a hold of these wonderful garments uh, that he has given to us of righteousness, this wonderful life that he's given to us in him, and just live every day praising him and live every day worshiping him and live every day growing and maturing in the things of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, if you don't give yourself to prayer, it is a foundation. You don't have a foundation. Let me just say that. If you don't give yourself to prayer, you don't have a foundation for it as a spiritual life foundation. And I'm not just talking about lay me down to sleep prayers. I'm not talking about these kind of prayers that people like to pray right out of their head and just, it just to listen to it. It's a sound, it's tinkling cymbal and sound of brass worse than somebody speaking in tongues that don't have love. Huh? You just pray around me and if you want me to let you know, I would be happy. I'd be very, very happy to go ahead and criticize and critique your prayer. Hey Amen. I'm an expert at that. Praise God. <laughs> And the reason I'm an expert because God critiqued my prayer. And then I've given myself to prayer, so I'm good at critiquing prayer. But besides that, it's my position to do that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I walk out, look at the cattle, and if I, it's my, my responsibility to critique the cattle. And if there's something that's skinny, it needs there's something wrong, we had to get that thing over and, and do several different maneuvers to it and checks and evaluations. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, we just put their head in a... We put them in a squeeze and put their head in a, uh, in, a, in a clamp and then we do whatever we want to do. And of course, God's people aren't that way, but you're supposed to be sheep that are easily, easily spoken to, easily talked to. You're supposed to be obedient, soft-hearted, tender-hearted, obedient children of God that as soon as you're instructed to do something, you do it. You don't get stiff-necked. You don't get hard-hearted. You don't get discouraged. You don't get disappointed. You're not rebellious. You're not stubborn. You say, yes, sir, I'm going to do that from this day forward. Happy for you to come and check up on me and make sure that I'm doing it right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know... Um, it, you know, if, you, if you're thinking about the things that you would want somebody to pray for you, if you, somebody asks you, well, what can I pray for you about? How can I pray on your behalf? I'm going to tell you the best thing that you could answer that person so that now you can go ahead and pray for one another this way and you go ahead and pray for yourself this way too. Um, ask, you just simply respond that I should be strengthened, that I should be empowered, that I should be enabled with the power of the living God, strengthened by the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost in my inner being. To be strengthened so that I can comprehend, strengthened so that I can begin to move with Him. Dear people, there's a war waging against you. God's purpose that you don't live your life as mere men anymore. God's purpose that you don't live in a realm that causes you to constantly be tossed by every wind of, 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 of offensive against, that Satan throws out against you. Every, every wind of demon influence, every wind of demon doctrine, every wind of demon, demonic temptation and, and, and those things that would 
pull us away from this wonderful life in God. You're going to have to begin to identify the enemy. And those of you, you listen to me right now. Those of you got things going on in your life that's not right with God, you better identify where that is coming from. And if it's a TV, bust the thing in two. If it's your computer, you're not allowed to have one anymore. I mean, come on. If, if it's whatever it is, get rid of it. If it's your house, burn it down. I'd suggest you get a, a, a burn permit first. But I mean, barring nothing, I mean, I, you don't want to go to hell. The one thing you want to do is make heaven. But furthermore, and, and, and what I would say that is, that is so important is that we have a company of people that come together. And listen, if, you, if you're constantly falling on your face and constantly falling into some kind of sin or, or there's a stronghold of demon power in your life, in one way or the other, I want you to understand how to take hold of the blood of Jesus Christ and instantaneously get cleansed and get delivered so that you're going to be free to worship. You're going to be free to move in these wonderful things of the Holy Ghost and get caught away in glory. What you, and that's supposed to happen right in the context of the church. And once it starts happening in the church, then it's going to start happening in your everyday life. And if it ain't happening in, your church, in the church, it isn't happening in everyday life. I'm just telling you, I know who you are. I know what you do with your life because I can see what happens in the context of the church. I'm not the only one who knows this and believes this. You can ask any Holy Ghost preacher. I've heard many men say this without any prompting from me. Oh, let's just get them in the meeting. We'll watch them when the Spirit of God starts moving. We'll know everything about them. We'll know who they are. Just wait. Get them in the meeting. Watch how they worship. Get them in the meeting. As soon as we start preaching, everything will be manifested. Because see, the light of God manifests everything. And then people, if we try to help folks, all they do is they want to go run in the behind a bush and hide. They want to run, run behind a bush and hide. They don't want to be exposed. They want to run behind a bush and hide, just like Adam covered his sin. And then there, listen to me, and there's people who've gotten involved in all kinds of things. They've gotten involved in, in demonic occultism, witchcraft, acupuncture, uh, um, the martial arts. I go on, I just go ahead and name them all. Be demonic things that are just as bad as sorcery. It's the same roots. It has absolutely no place of, uh, 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 of being in your spirit at all. And then they wonder why it is that they're being hindered. They allow these various different ungodly demonic activities. They find themselves murmuring, complaining. They will not listen to instruction. There's a, they find a, a, a realm of their life that is rebellious and they know that they're a rebel all these things there's a whole i could go I, if i started naming them i could go through so many i know how to erase all of that and not have to deal with or analyze or evaluate all of the mess all you got to do is get real desperate to god and say look i need to be baptized in the holy ghost and fire and i want to be baptized in the holy ghost and fire and i want this glorious anointing of the spirit of the living god to flow out of me and something's missing big time in my life and when you get serious with yourself you'll get serious with god and god will get serious with you and you'll have everything that the bible describes for you to have <laughs> Hallelujah. For me, man, I mean, I tell you, I don't know why I'm so different. But the right reality of it is, I, got around, I get around anointed people of God. I see the anointing in their life, and I get desperate to have it. I want to I wanna have the expressions of divine power and glory. I want to sit around in the shadows looking like and acting like men. I want to look like and act like Jesus. I want to look, look like and act like the Holy Ghost. I want to look like and act like Elijah. I want to look like and act like Paul. I want to look like and act like Peter. I want to look like and act like Enoch. I want to look like and act like everybody who's had any authority of God in their life. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to see God to die. Actually, Deborah came to tell me basically that I'm going to do a mass evangelism crusade in Mongolia. And that was good news to me. Praise God. Yeah, you're so excited. That's amazing to me. So we'll be doing that in the next six, seven months. People just, it's just so, it's just, 
You, when you live after the natural, you know what I'm saying? You got to plan it all out, don't you? But when you live in the spirit, prophets come, word of the Lord comes, spirit of the Lord, God moves, and you move with the wind. You don't know where the wind's blowing. Doesn't matter. You're moving with the wind. When the wind's blowing this way, you're going this way, huh? The wind's going, you're going this way. Hallelujah. We get ready to do the first mass evangelism crusade ever in the nation of Mongolia. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mongolia. Mangalang along to die. And Papa's going to, Papa set it all up. Set it all up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I'm telling you, dear people, God wants to use you. God wants to use you. I was just so blessed hearing um, Deborah say that, you know, I just see you all as missionaries. You know, she comes from a company of people that some of the greatest men and women of God have come out of that ministry out of Christ for the Nations. Benson Idahosa, graduate of Christ for the Nations. I go through a whole list, but there's nobody who functioned, flowed in the anointing of the Holy Ghost like Benson Idahosa. He revealed Jesus Christ to his generation. My goodness gracious. A man from Africa was able to take hold of a place of simply... And somebody said, well, that's special. No, it's because he was willing with total abandonment to have God and God alone. God and nothing else. But God didn't want anything else but God. And thus he had God. Uh -huh. And so we could go through a list of men... Over the ages, there's a lot of people who read the United States of America, the Western world, and in Asia. They got God with a lot of other nice stuff. And God's just one of their things. God's one of their comforts. But what happens when God becomes your only comfort? God is just one of their daily options. But what if he's, he's your God without distraction? Hallelujah. What if you want him to be? My goodness gracious, that's the way it's going to be. People say, well, you don't understand. I've invested so much money into my career. i got to be busy about my job. I've buried myself and buried myself so deep in debt. I'm going to be the next hundred years getting out of debt. I mean, uh, you know, 150 years if I want to retire, you know, or whatever. And look, you know what? God's bigger than all of that. Yeah, you may have, you know, I heard people, I heard people say that they were going to go to school and get an education so they could serve the Lord. And all I saw them serving themselves, by and large, 90% of it. 90% of it. Huh? Hello? Because hello. 10% all I know about was given to the ministry. Maybe 20%? Well, so the 80% was serving themselves. 20% went to God. Huh? Well, then if I took it and broke it down in hours of the day, then maybe then I would be more persuasive about what it is that people are really doing with your time. You know what? We need to examine ourselves. Find out what we really are. Prove don't a man let a man think of himself more than he ought to think of. Evaluate what's going on in your life. <laughs> That's what you need to do. And then if you find out that things going on in your life don't match up with what Father has purposed for your life, then repent, cry out to God, say, I change right now. I'm forsaking everything and following in you. I pray tonight that everybody in this place would simply be willing to say, Lord, I truly take everything that I have. And if you've got a queasy spirit, it's a demon spirit that gives you a queasy spirit. When you start hearing about this stuff, you listen to me. You run the, the, the evil thing off of your life because it'll drag you right down into hell. You listen to me. You need to take everything about your life and recognize that in this deal and in this consecration, you're not your own. You're not allowed to live for your own. You're not allowed to make your own choices. Everything that you've got, everything that you have belongs to God. So quit murmuring about uh, whatever it is that you are murmuring about and start serving God with everything that you have and everything that you are. In Jesus' name. I pray that you change. I want to talk to you about the faith that's come to us from Jesus. I want to talk to you about the righteousness that is by faith. A righteousness that is by faith. A faith that transformed our lives. Not an abstract faith, not an abstract righteousness by faith, but a, a righteousness by faith where you and I were made a new creature where we were made a new creation, where we were raised up unto a new life through this miracle work of divine power that exists in the name of Jesus. I want to talk to you about a righteousness by faith that Jesus preached to Nicodemus when he said, you must be born again. 
You can't come into the kingdom. You can't see the kingdom. You can't know anything about the kingdom until you're born again. And when you're born again, you're born of the Spirit. To understand that the righteousness which is by faith is not a righteousness that comes by the law because the righteousness that comes by the law is something to do with man's ability out of his own effort and strength. Whereas a righteousness by faith is where the Holy Ghost now comes, fills us up, our spirit becomes joined with his spirit because he gives us a new spirit that can be joined with his spirit. You understand that? Do, do you understand that you do not have the spirit that you were born with when you were born of your parents? Do you understand that? If you've got the same spirit that you had when you were born of your parents, then you have not been born again yet. I don't care how many prayers you prayed. I don't care how many times you've been baptized. I don't care how many times you've given an offering in the church. I don't care how many songs you know or how many scriptures you know. If you've not been born of the Spirit where you've got a different spirit that is normal for men, you are not born again. And by that evaluation, there's a lot of people standing in jeopardy of an eternity without God. And there needs to be a wake-up call among God's people. And they need to get serious. When God's people get serious, there is going to be a spirit of seriousness manifested through their life. And it's going to begin to impact people around them. And suddenly, their testimony will not be lifeless and sterile, but it will be powerful and reproducible. True. It, it won't just be little babblings about Jesus. But it will be the gospel preached with divine power and authority because you are a partaker of a changed life. Now, now, the, the Lord Jesus lays it out for us in Galatians and lays it out for us in Romans. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach, uh, I'm going to preach the faith tonight. Okay? And then preach the faith. That's what Paul referred to it. Uh, referred to it as in Galatians chapter 23, or chapter 1, <laughs> verse 23, he, he, he referred to the gospel as uh, preaching the faith. So he preached the faith. And then I want you to just take a little walk with me here through um, Galatians. And I want you to look here with me in Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. He says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law... Well, the law was a testimony of what God wanted for man. Do you understand that? Do everybody understand? The law was a testimony of what God wanted for men. And the law demanded you to do a number of different things to prove that you were going to be a committed law keeper. And one of them was you had to go get circumcised. Ouch. Hopefully it happened when you, before you knew what was taking place. Okay, women are off the hook, so don't worry about it. Okay, but you've got a whole bunch of different things that you're going to have to do and observe. He said, he, he tells us, he says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith that is of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. I want you to understand that justification by the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, justification by Jesus Christ means that you were born again, that now you have, are going to live in the spirit and not live after the human ability. Living after the human ability is subject to demon power. Living by the spirit of the living God, you have all a dominion and authority over all evil spirits. This is what Paul is saying. He's going to bring it down to this in Galatians chapter 5, and he's going to make a contrast. He's going to make it very clear. He's going to make a clear distinction between what it means to live after the flesh and to walk after the flesh and to walk after demon power, to walk after a fallen nature, a nature that does not have the ability to stand against iniquity <laughs> and what it means to live after a nature that has been given to us by the Spirit of the Lord when we received a new spirit and a new heart. Of course, Peter calls it the divine nature. In 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4, he said, See, as we have escaped the corruption that is in the world. I've escaped. I'm not wondering if I've escaped. I've escaped hell. See, when I, when, when, when I say I've escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, when I say I've escaped adultery, fornication, all the perversions, all the wickedness, all the drunkenness, all of the evil appetites that belong to a demonic world, I am saying that I have escaped hell damnation and wrath. I'm living over in a place now 
I'm living in the ark of safety. I've come in. It's like I'm walking around in the boat of faith. I'm walking around in the ark that Jesus built, not Noah. I'm walking in over realm over here in the household of divine power and glory. I'm in a heavenly realm. I'm in the holy place. I'm the temple of the living God. I'm his people. He's my God. He's watching over me. I'm baptized in his glory. I'm walking in the spirit. I'm living in a fire that sent down from heaven, baptized in this wonderful glory through the ministry of Jesus Christ. Now I have to be willing to stay there. I have to be willing to live there. It is a daily everything, daily event that is going on here. We deny ourselves. We take up our cross and follow him. We put on Christ Jesus and make no provision for the flesh. I do that. And if you don't do that, it's because one of two reasons. Either you are not saved or you are not willing and not willing will be real quickly not saved. Now, you ask me, how many times can I live as a backslider and go to heaven? The answer to that question is no. You're going to have to get over your disease of backsliding. Now, what are you going to have to do to do that? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, if you can't live for God where you're at right now, then go out into the mountains, strip yourself of all things that belong to this earth, and live out there and see if you can make heaven. But I tell you, I would do whatever it took if I couldn't walk for God, with God right here in this holy place, no matter where I'm at, then I mean, I'd go find out a place that I could live this, in this holy realm for God. Now, listen, I, and I say that in all sincerity. One of the things that um, my dear friends in Asia are concerned about, they don't, they really are hesitant to allow any of their, their students to come to America. Why? Because they get a taste of America and they never want to go back. It doesn't matter how much they have consecrated their life to the Lord. They look around and they see why they get one glance of Disneyland. Huh? And one sip of Jamba juice. Huh? And, and, and listen, and the possibility of, of getting alone and having a car, forget going back to that whatever, it, you know, country that they had their, you know, heart set on serving for the rest of their life. You live in it. You live in it. You live in it. And um, then you're going to have to decide whether or not you need to go to Asia and live in Asia. You might, it, it might be best for some people just go ahead, sell everything they have and go get themselves a lean-to in the Himalayas and learn how to survive by the power of God. Because maybe this lo luxury and love of ease would ultimately damn your soul. Maybe you're going to listen to the propaganda and the lies that says, oh, it's okay, you can sin more or less every day and you're going to be okay. Oh, we all do it. Oh, you got to watch out for Mark. He's too radical. But the problem is, is there are literally tens of thousands of preachers like me. And if you look over the ages, there are millions of preachers like me. you got a lot of people up against this modern-day state of apostasy. Huh? And furthermore, you've got the living word of God that would absolutely change you and shake you if you would give yourself to reading it every day. You would suddenly come under a Holy Ghost conviction that would cause you to recognize that you can't live the way you've been living and be right with God. And that's what really messes the program up when we go to worship and in this place and people want to walk in here with their rat's nest in their back pocket. Uh, and their putrefying garments of sinful corruption and lift your hands up towards heaven, you like a, a sacrifice in a pig. That's what the prophet Isaiah said. Huh? You're creating a stink in the house. Huh? You're 11, 11 in the whole lump. You get right with God. You listen to me. Huh? I'm going to tell you right now, people are going to start falling down dead in the house of God. They are, because God's going to move by His power. And people who are speaking against the anointing, they're going to go mute. People who are mute and born mute are going to get healed and be able to speak. People who have been speaking and start speaking against the anointing, they're going to go mute. People who are trying to persuade others to turn them away from the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to go blind, just like Simon Sorcerer. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm stepping into my call. I'm going to serve communion tonight. You better be careful when you take a sip of this. 
because you'll drink and eat damnation to your soul if you eat and drink it unworthily. And if you regard iniquity in your heart, then you are eating and drinking it unworthily. And uh, yeah, maybe people don't fall down dead right away, but you're going to find out that you can't walk with God. You have no power to walk with God. Proof that they, that you either, you've either been, or you're already a castaway or in jeopardy of being one. <laughs> the church is going to have to get right before the world gets right. Because all that's going to happen is that if we go out and start preaching the gospel and signs and wonders take place, miracles start taking place, people come in and then they see all the compromise going on, they go over and hang out with you and they, they see you partaking of things that are unholy, then all they're going to do is they're going to do the same thing and the whole, all that's going to happen is you've got a great harvest, but it's all been ruined. It all gets mildewed. It's fit for nothing but to be burned. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not going over there. There's no love. He's always just talking about how people need to get right with God. We can go over there where they tell us we're all right. And we're all good. And we can all congratulate ourselves. Nonsense. Nonsense. God called us to holiness and purity. He, I'm telling you now. He's called us to walk humbly before him. He's called us, if you walk humbly with, before God, then you're going to obey. You're not going to be stubborn. Huh? You're not going to have to spend, you're not, you're not going to have to spend 20 years pulling on you like a mule. Huh? Are you with me? Come over to the trough and drink some water of life. Are you listening to me? Ten, spend 20 years pulling on somebody. My God in heaven, you, you, you can have to get... You had to get hungry. You had to get thirsty. And no one had to be pulling on you anymore. If you're not thirsty, what's, that wrong? what's wrong with you if you're not thirsty? It's proof that you're not right with God. It's proof that you don't have the Spirit of God. I can't help it if somebody said you were saved, repeat after me. Now they said you saved. I mean, nothing. Huh? Transformed life. Changed heart means you're saved. And a transfer life to a changed heart ultimately results in the Holy Ghost being expressed through your life. Uh, uh, the Holy Ghost is passionate. He hungry. He, sits, he expresses the spirit of the Son who loves God and hungry for truth and praises and worships Him and lives fully for Him and is totally yielded to the Spirit of grace. And don't resist the Holy Ghost. Listen to me now. I want to run off the powers of darkness that have been able to effectively wage a war against you and stop you from being whom God has called you to be. I want you to understand this righteousness which is by faith, which is a righteousness that is by the Holy Ghost. God has purposed that you and I live in the Holy Ghost. We live in the spirit of truth that we walk in, that we walk in the light as he is in the light, that we live by his divine power, not by human power, his divine power, not by Adam power, by Jesus power. How many different ways do we need to say it? We want God his purpose that you have a different kind of life. If you act like you did when you four years old you're not saved because that's the spirit you had when you were born of your parents more than likely I imagine there's a few four-year-olds that have been born again somewhere are you listening to me you better listen to me you better understand you better examine yourself see if Christ is in you <laughs> hallelujah because uh, if you think that you're right with God and Christ isn't in you then you're a reprobate then all you're going to be is a person that's that much more deceived. I'm not going to stand by and watch that nonsense go down, dear people. Come on now. I'm not standing around and watch people, you know, look, I mean, goodness gracious. Give yourself to the things of the Spirit. You'll get strong. Huh? Hallelujah. Praise God. You, 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 you understand how the tongues easily turns into the word of knowledge. You'll understand how the tongues easily turn into prophecy. You'll, you'll, you'll have a dance. You won't be able to stop it from dancing. Huh? I'm going to tell you right now, that person's never danced in the Holy Ghost. They haven't had much of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to just tell you that right now. Because anybody who's ever had the surging power of God is going to dance. They're going to shout. They're going to jump. They're going to leap. They, there, there is no question about it. So I said, oh, you're just talking about an experience. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm just telling you the power of God is a power to reckon with. It is a glory that overwhelms everything about you, redefines everything about you. I can't help it that some people have abused it. I mean, anybody could dance. Anybody can holler. You know what I'm saying? And, but, but the bottom line of it is I'm talking about 
I'm not just talking about anybody. I'm talking about the people of God who's been, who's been touched by the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you right now, if I hadn't been touched by the Holy Ghost, I'd at least act like it. You know what I'm saying? Some of you need to just start acting like it. Maybe something happened. Uh -huh. Just hop a little bit or something. Start enjoying the Lord. Start being overwhelmed by his loving kindness and by his tender mercies. Start getting excited about the things that God is doing in his house. Then perhaps, if you're willing, God will show you how to get excited about things out there outside of his house. You say, oh, man, am I living in my hand, but Holy Ghost thing. But then I come to church and nothing happens. Because what you have going on in your living room is not of God. What's of God is going on in here, and you can't connect. And so you just deceived. You think that what's going on in your living room is God, but it's not. It's a demonic power. What's going on in here is God. <laughs> so why don't you get rid of what's going on in your living room, get into what's going on here, and then have what's going on here go on in your living room. Reverse the thing. I mean, that should make sense. You know, God didn't ordain your living room to be the place where his glory is revealed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He didn't put your living room into position to mature you. <laughs> he put pastors and apostles and prophets and pastors, pastors and teachers and hallelujah, cool to masa day, and prophets and prophetesses. I mean, you know. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to have, next month, we're going to have several different people coming in and praise the name of Jesus and going to minister to you. And I, I, want you, I want you to be able to receive. If you're just going to continue on being, you know, doing whatever it is that you do that you think is good enough, you're not going to receive. If you're happy with who you are and what you've got and wish people could recognize more about what you are or whatever, you're not going to get any more. You can't get anything like that. And so, but if you get hungry and you get thirsty and you want to have the things that God has for you, you and really hungry and thirsty really comes down, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll be whatever you want me to be. Then when the men and women of God come, you're going to be able to receive easily. And we're going to have, we're going to have the president of the Assemblies of God Bible School of the Nation, Nepal, the one who um, actually translated for me both in 2006 and in 2008. He, he's going to be here next month on the, on the Sunday the 18th. And uh, once again, the Lord's doing some amazing things. He's right now, I believe, they, they are, well, clearly in the nation of Nepal, they're raising up more, more pastors, more evangelists, and more missionaries than anybody in the nation. It's, the Lord has blessed them. They have a huge facility. They've got a huge staff. They've got an a, a, a ever-increasing student body. I think it's over 300 people now. And um, then we're going to have, uh, Tim tried to call me just before I got here. Tim Hall's going to be here next month. What are, you, what are you getting out of that? What's going on there? Those are anointings. I mean, Deborah O oh, comes here. I mean, this is Christ for the Nations, Korea. This is, a, this is a historic, significant event that has taken place. She comes here under divine mandate for something, for, to, 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 to impart something into your lives. And if you're just looky-loos, if you don't have any, any clue to what's going on because you're spiritually you know, out to whatever it is that you're doing in your, you know, everyday life, you miss out. You just miss out. And how many people got to pass by you with another anointing and just miss out? My goodness, you people should be so full of God when you basically, I mean, command the sun and the moon to stand still. You, know, you should be raising the dead on a daily basis in here. As much as the anointing, as many anointed men of God and women have come through this place, as much anointing as exists in this place, as much provision of God, and not anybody in here shouldn't be functioning in all nine gifts of the Spirit whenever you want. Really, well, whenever it's needed, and that's what I mean, whenever you want, obviously. You know, because you're giving yourself to the ministry, you're going to have, you're going to have. A word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, you're going to have miracles, gifts, healing, gifts, get the faith praise God I mean my goodness somebody who should have gotten a hold of enough anointing in this place to make several billion dollars by now seeing his father's looking for somebody he can entrust wealth to 
because there, there has got to be financial provision for us to go and do the things that God has given us to do. It's not run off of money, but it is run off of faith. And soon somebody gets a hold of the faith of this realm, they're going to produce. They're going to have those things that God is so desperate to supply in every dimension of life. The Lord tells you very clearly. He says that you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And he's not talking about what the arm of flesh can do in terms of prosperity. He's talking about the wealth that God gives, the riches that God gives, and that's no sorrow. I said the riches that God gives, that not that you earn, the riches that God gives. Amen. That's the way, the rich, I said the riches that God gives. Amen. 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 Come on now. And people get real with God and they hold, take a hold of the Word of God and, and, and live by the Word of God. There's more in the Word of God for you than there is in your job. One day you're going to, oh, praise God, I pray in Jesus' name, you're going to grow up and then you're going to look back on your life and you're going to say, how stupid I was to think I could have provided a better life for me than, uh, than Father God, to think that I could have had more for myself by the works of my own hands than what I would have following Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to rise to the battle. You're going to rise to the occasion in Jesus' name. You're going to understand how to walk in the spirit and walk in the anointing and be able to put to flight the armies of the alien. To lay hold of the promises and the giftings of God that he's made available to those who are real with him. Huh? I'm not going to say, well, you know, I did this and then did that. I'm going to sit around with some braggitis and try to justify myself. My goodness gracious. We need to do the greater works. Even if you had done the works, you still need to do the greater works. And you should be passionate about it. Should it bring you to a place of fasting and prayer? Huh? It should. The righteousness that is by faith in Jesus Christ alone is a righteousness that comes to us because we've been born again. By the miracle of the new birth, not by any works of righteousness which we have done, nothing that we earned with God, we called upon the name of Jesus Christ in sincerity and truth and said, I don't want anything else to do with this world. I don't want the things of darkness. I don't want the things of this life. I want the things that belong to you, Lord Jesus. I want the things that belong to you, living God. Come save me. I want to be where you're at. I want to be with you. I want out of this prison. I want out of this, I want out of this, this this realm of darkness, and in doing so, Christ Jesus comes and rescues us, and the power of the Holy Ghost transforms us and gives to us a new life, a life, the life of God, a life that we now live by the Spirit, and that is the righteousness which is by faith in Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to try to get through Galatians. I could actually... Go through the list of Romans on this too. If you would do, a, if you like, did a, a Bible search, uh, take a, put faith in your search engine and look for faith, you would see that you will find faith more in Romans and Galatians than any of Paul's writings. And if you would begin to focus in on those statements of faith in um, Romans and in Galatians and understand them in the context of being a new creation, being born again, being born of the Spirit, you would have a whole new understanding of what God expects of your life and you would be empowered to be able to do it because the Word will work a miracle in you. The Word will produce faith in you. And when you got faith, you got yourself some powerful ability to do exactly what God asked of you, no matter how impossible it may seem. This is true. Okay, and then I'm going to lay out this just real quickly and then I'm going to have some time to run over to Hebrews chapter 11 and let you look at the actual application of faith and see that faith is a deed. It is a working, it is a moving when you can't see something, a moving when it's something has, is still yet off into the future, but you believe as though it happened already, it's taking place, it's in the now. So that you recognize that faith is not some esoteric belief system. Just say that because you can say that Jesus uh, is your Lord doesn't mean anything. Jesus said so. Jesus said so. He said not everyone who says Lord, Lord is coming in. 
He said, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, is coming into my house. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, is right with the Father. He said, it's those who do the will of the Father. They're the ones that are right with the Father. And I'm going to tell you right now, be number one, right here, myself. I am going to examine myself, and I'm going to put myself right there in the spotlight of heaven, and I'm going to ask Father, Father, am I doing your will? Am I doing it the way you want me to do it? Father, I want to do your will, so if there's anything that is in my life that is not of your will, I want it out of my life, and I want to get on with whatever you've purposed for me to do. And I advise you to do the same thing. I advise you to get on, the pro on with the program. Doing with the will of the Father was modeled for us by the Lord Jesus Christ, and there's absolutely no way that you can say you're doing the will of the Father from some subjective point of view when you're not following Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, the rich man, quit your job, sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and come follow me. Jesus looking upon the rich man, Scripture says he loved him. That's what Scripture says. Looking upon the rich man there standing there, oh God, I want to be right with you. God, what must I do to be right with you? God, I want to be right. What must I do to enter into the kingdom of, of heaven? Jesus turned to him and gave him a list of things. He said, all I've, I've done all these things from my youth. He said, you lack one thing. When he said, all these things I've done from my youth, Jesus looked at him and loved him. Because Jesus saw it was true. He lived a pure, he lived a right life. He lived a wholesome life of honesty and integrity and godliness. He said, you lack one thing. Go sell all that you have. Give it to the poor. Come follow me. So do you, how do you going to wiggle out of that? How are you going to justify that? How are you going to wiggle out of that tonight? USA of America. Huh? Living for myself. Huh? Got a mortgage. Got several, you know, got several houses, uh, a fleet of cars. Uh -huh. I mean, what are you going to do, USA of America? How are you going to wiggle out of that? How are you going to try to tell me how that you go into work every day to support the kingdom of God? Give me a break. If we had to live off of your support, we'd get out, we'd get out of town. Are you listening to me? I'm talking to people here. I'm talking to people who are listening to me on the web. You can't even make it to the meeting. You support. Give me a break. At least, at least you got some warm bodies in here giving some support. <laughs> Watching by YouTube. Listen to me, man. Get, get out of that deception, out of that lie. God's kingdom doesn't work off a financial basis. It works off of a realm of faith, which you're going to have to be willing to give yourself to prayer and give yourself to the Word of God and give yourself to the things of the Spirit of God and give yourself to all of the meetings. There are people, they, they, they just, they, they want to have more anointing, they want to have an increase, but they don't put God first. They, they're, not, they're going to be in the meeting when it's convenient for them, when it works out of their time schedule. And then they're not going to give themselves ardently and desperately to modeling the anointing and walking after the anointing and imitating the anointing and learning from the anointing, they can do it their own way. People want to have it on their own terms because everybody's brilliant and genius and, and anointed more, more than Jesus is in their own mind. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but it's, other than it's just a state of deception. Huh? Or, or, or if it's not a state of deception, it, it's just some kind of just terrible intimidation where people won't get up and start laying hold of these things and, and, and follow up the leader. Are you listening to me? Uh-uh. Should be in everybody's spirit continually around here because you're following the leader. Instead of just sitting around. Huh? We don't want you looking like those lions <laughs> that were there in the pit when Daniel was thrown in with their mouths all bound up. We want you to look at those who, whose mouth's been filled with good things. We want to hear heaven. I want to hear the Holy Ghost come out of you. Huh? I want to hear the growls of the human nature. Huh? I want to hear the... If you give your mouth to complaint, when you say praise the Lord, it sounds like a complaint. If you give your mouth to lust, when you say praise the Lord, it's sticky. 
It is, for those who, know, who, those who are discerning. You can feel it. It ain't right. Because the Lord lets you feel, as you mature and grow, you get to feel what he feels. You get to react to it the way he reacts to it. Yeah. If you, if you begin to praise the Lord out of insincere heart, out of a religious thing, it is the, uh, it is the most defiling sound that exists. Shh. Quiet. Why don't you just enjoy listening? We'll worship. You sit and listen. Huh? Till the anointing hits you. Till the power of God hits you. Probably what we're going to happen. First people, first people, I'm going to tell you right now what's going to happen. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to, I'm, I'm not going to talk to babes here tonight. I'm talking to people that ought to be grown. Are you with me? Usually what happens when people start getting right, first thing that happens is they begin to weep and cry because they crush for the way they've been living. As soon as you have an experience, an encounter with God, it breaks you open. It breaks you open. It breaks you open. You're not hard no more. You're not calloused. You're not like... Just a blank stare. Huh? It's just not there anymore. That's a spirit. It's actually, a, it's actually an evil spirit. It creates a blank stare. There's no lie. If there's not the absorbing of the Word of God and the life and the Spirit of God. I, I heard one preacher say, he looked out across the church and he saw uh, in, in a number of different churches throughout the United States of America, it was like everybody were just empty husk. There was no corn there, just empty husk. Pentecostal churches, empty husk. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite intense when somebody comes along and starts examining you with the Word of God, isn't it? Starts putting some responsibility on your shoulders. Huh? Proof that Christ is in you. Evidence of the Holy Ghost. Proof of a changed heart. The expressions of rivers of living water coming out of you. Not just, I got a river of life flowing out of me. Anybody can see that? Let's see it. Let's see the river. Paul said, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to see, I want to, I'm going to demand of you a proof that Christ is in you. Oh, my goodness. Come on, Paul. Hallelujah. So you can just, you can just you say, he hands you, you hand you the microphone. So I want to hear you pray first of all. I want to hear you talk to the Father. Huh? I feel like just getting the microphone over here. You know, that's the first thing he wants. I want to hear you talk to the Father. There's a lot of people that are that way right now. Ministers that are that way right now. Huh? When I get done praying, I want them to say, I never heard anybody pray like that in my entire life. <laughs> huh? Hallelujah. And I'm not doing it to prove anything. I'm just doing it because that's just how I talk to Dad. Uh, like that, and it's not just me talking. It's not me talking to Dad. It's the Spirit of the Son because it's no longer I that lives. It's Christ. See, this is the righteousness that is by faith. I no longer live my own life. I got His life. I hand you the microphone and begin to hear you pray. Huh? And then if I was the Apostle Paul, I'd say, that's terrible. <laughs> if it were terrible. Huh? Or that's glorious. If it was glory, I'd say, that's human. If it's of the human realm. Or that's just mental ascent. If it's of the mental ascent realm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I had a guy come in one day and he was a minister of the gospel and, and his wife, minister, his family minister. And after the meeting, he said, I noticed that, that uh, three out of the six people you have up on the platform actually know how to flow in the Holy Ghost. And the other three are just standing there. Why is that? I said, go ask them. Go ask them. Because I've asked them a hundred times. I, I mean, I'm done. Put a fork in me. I'm done. Because it's a reality. It's an expression. To people, you, 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 it's, more than, it's more than what you can pretend to be. It's more than what you can act out or show out. It's, there is a witness of divine glory. And it's, it's about high time that people of the Spirit who know the difference start opening their mouth and go ahead and quit trying to play politics and say, oh, by the way, you don't know anything about the anointing. You don't know how to hook up. 
you might have a you might be able to supposedly speak in tongues and you might be able to quote some Bible verses, but you don't know how to hook up with the Holy Ghost. Now, dear people, if I had somebody say that to me, I would be most ashamed. What would it do to me? Would it make me hate them? Would it make me fuss at them? Would it make me go, go home and say, I can't believe you said that about me. I tell you, I would dive on that carpet like it was a 20-foot, you know, pool. Crying out to God, oh, God, change me. God, what's wrong with me? God, deliver me from whatever it is that's in the way that's keeping me from being able to yield to the Holy Ghost because the righteousness which is by faith is the activity and working of the Holy Ghost in my life that is seen visible like a light, like a city set upon the hill to where that anybody who knows about the things of the Spirit recognizes you not worshiping out of a human realm, you're worshiping out of the realm of the Spirit of the Son, you're working, worshiping out of the realm of Christ Jesus, you worshiping out of the realm of the Holy Ghost. That is the offering that is acceptable. All the rest of it is religion. Religion. And you don't get this without a cost and without a price. You don't get these things. It's free, but you don't get it without a price. Huh? You got to say goodbye to your life and hello to Jesus. Huh? Yeah. You got to be willing to deny yourself. You got to, and if you love the things, if you're walking in the spirit, you're going to love the things of the spirit. If you're not walking in the spirit, you're not going to love the things of the spirit. I'm going to tell you, the word of God is spirit. The word of God is spirit in life. It's not intellectualism. It's not like your history book. It's, I mean, can you imagine the Lord looking at you and you gave 20 hours in the week to your history book and you gave 30 minutes to the, to the living word? And then you're, you're going to be a Holy Ghost person. No, you're not. No, you're not. You deceived yourself. You just, you know, because, you know, God's easy. God's just easy. We don't really need to put anything into that. You know? Because it's out of mind, out of sight. It's unseen. Huh? To leave everything, to go on a promise... And go out into a place that we don't even know where we're going. Who's going to do that? The people of faith. That's what Abraham did. People of faith. And he had the righteousness which is by faith. He was, righteousness was imputed to him because of faith. <laughs> because he laid hold on the things which he could not see. He believed the things that, that, God said in his word, which was not evidenced by the eye, he lived a life every day seeking a city that has habitation, a dwelling place, not seeking another financing program for a new home or a better job or more stuff. And managing your money where it's barely hard, it's going to be real challenging for you to give 10% to God. Or we're going to give you eight and a half. <laughs> Offerings. Taking care of the poor and the widows. Well, they can do with a couple of mites. No, they can't do with a couple of mites. I mean, the Lord says pure and undefiled religion is to visit the widows and the orphans and their affliction. There's many orphans tonight that don't have food to eat. Somebody's going to have to pay a price to get them some food on a long-term basis. Somebody's going to somebody's gonna have, to, somebody's gonna have to give themselves to, to making it happen instead of waiting for somebody else to do the job. Come on now. Somebody's going to have to take a hold of a realm of faith, in other words. Somebody's going to have to participate with complete abandonment to say, wait a minute, God has placed me in position to be in charge of his stuff, to do the things that he himself is doing right now, his purpose for us to do right now. Somebody said, how can God be letting the orphans starve over there at that orphanage? They love the Lord. Lord, are you sleeping? What's wrong? Are you there? No, he's there. He said, 
pray. Ask the Lord of the harvest to raise up laborers. The harvest is plenteous. So yeah, you see the plenteous harvest and you're going, Father, why don't you come down and do something? He says, no. Why don't you pray and ask me to raise somebody up? I'm doing my best. If everybody would participate and do what I told them to do, there would be no lack. If everybody would participate and yield to me and, and receive the things that I'm giving, there would be glory and authority in the house and the riches of the Gentiles would already be flowing into the place because of the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the glory, the wisdom, the beauty, the splendor of the place. And every man's turned to his own self and wringing their hands about their stuff. I'll tell you right now, if you're wringing your hands about your stuff, you need to get rid of that stuff because that stuff is a God to you. And why wait to the judgment seat and to find out that you've been serving other gods? And you're going to stand before a God who says, I will not be served alongside any other gods. And the God of self and the God of pride and the God of wealth and the God of human interest and, and, and the God of all these things that belong to covetousness... <laughs> are just the same as any other little idols that people set up, Buddhas or whatever else. Oh, I can't believe they're bowing down to a Buddha. Oh, I can't believe you're bowing down to your job. Hmm. I can't believe how you prioritize God over and again. I mean, we just need to examine ourselves. It isn't about condemnation. It is about examining yourself. It is about saying, look, I'm going to take a hold of things of God. I'm going to take a hold of a living God who answers prayer. Huh? I'm going to tell you right now, if you came here tonight with some kind of weak little faith and you're about to be, you know, you so frail that you're about to, you know, uh, collapse in, in, with, with, any, with anything that would be challenging... You know what? You need to get right with God so you can be secure in your faith tonight and get consecrated in that way from this day forward. Every time you hear preaching like this, all you do is you grab a hold of the things of God and say with greater commitment and consecration, I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> I told somebody, I said, you know what I do is I preach to my children, which are all adults now, and then if anybody else can profit, fine, but I'll make sure they're going to get to heaven. So I'm a, I, I preach on a level to make sure my, my family makes heaven. Then I know that I'm preaching on a level that I need to be preaching on. There's not a reason at all that every single person in this place, or I could say that the majority of the people in this place, should not be flowing in the anointing of the Holy Ghost in a more mature way. Do it. It is. You don't have to have a song. You just, you just there, already. And when prayer comes, come on. It's not. You say, "Well, my voice, and I, I don't have a very strong voice." And then about your voice. I'm talking about the Spirit of God that motivates. Because I'm telling you right now, you stick your finger in the light socket. Okay, take the ball out. Lick your finger. Stick your finger in the light socket. We're going to hear a holler. Because you're going to be motivated. You're going to be deeply inspired. Yeah, you are. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Ah, you listen to me. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like one brother said, you'd slam me to a hand in the door. You gotta stand there and say, hey, old child, please open up the door. <laughs> my hand's in there. You smashed my fingers completely. <laughs> oh, yes, amen. You're not gonna do this. <laughs> We're gonna hear some shouting. We're going to hear some shouting. We're going to hear some thunderous <laughs> yells that come from deep within your being. Hallelujah. Let me just tell you something. Here, listen to me tonight. The Lord wants you to know that you've been born again, not guess. He wants you to know you have a new spirit and a new heart. He wants to show you a realm of divine living. He wants to show you a place 
that he has given to you and, and I, anyone who will receive, where you can live in this glory of heaven all the time. Dear people, let, let's, just, let's, just, let's just go ahead and take a hold of the things that God has for us. Let's, let's quit justifying things. Let's quit wavering back and forth from faith to doubt, from certainty to uncertainty, from light to darkness. Just recognize that the Holy Spirit is here right now. That God's turning no one, not a single person away. And as I'm ministering right now, if you get a doubt of whether or not you've been born again, all you got to do is, and you want to be serious about God, all you got to do is be serious at this moment and call out upon the name of the Lord in all sincerity and the miracle will take place. And the change will come. And you don't have to wonder anymore. So it's not like, you know, oh, no, well, I'm in jeopardy. I'm not sure. I'm uncertain. And then you got to leave unsure and uncertain. Because if you want to be certain, if you want to know you're right with God, all you got to do in this context is cry out, God, I want to I know I'm right with you. And I, I really, I don't see that as the bigger problem. What I see is the bigger problem as I see all these, these things that people allow in their life that become strongholds of Satan that keeps them from being able to live and walk in the Spirit and receive the things that the Holy Spirit is freely and continually supplying. If you fall, if you sin, how easy is it to get up and get washed and get cleansed? It is as easy as you desiring to get washed and get cleansed and to live right. That's how easy it is. If you don't have a passion for God, how easy is it to turn this thing around in your life to where you do have a passion? How easy then is it for you to open up your mouth and start yelling and screaming, help me? Pretty easy. If, you're, if all of a sudden reality strikes your soul and you recognize, wait a minute, I do not have the manifest glory of God. The things of the Spirit of God are not being manifested in my life and I'm not going to be willing to sit here or stand here or lay there or whatever it is and continue on without the glory of God being manifested. Hello. So then how many people are just going to shake their head and how many people are going to do it from now on? Yeah, be, okay. And about everybody that didn't raise their hand, haven't been doing it and probably won't do it. Everybody that did raise their hand pretty much have been doing it. It just works that way. Because you're always, we're always witnessing to ourselves. You know what? You can get a lot of insight if you just keep your eyes open. If you just watch how you react to things, watch how people react to things, it's all, everything's always continually being manifest. It really is. Discernment isn't that hard to get when you're, when you're walking in the light and you're just, your eyes are open to what's going on around you. Because who you are inside is going to continually be revealed. The trouble you've got going on inside, the strongholds you've got going on inside, and I mean to take a hold of some people, grab them, throw them down the ground, cast the devil out of them tonight. Yeah. Or break off oppression, whatever the case may be. Some people I can do it to. Some people I can't. They're religious. You can't cast religion out. You can't. It's a self realm. You can't cast it out. And, we, and religion will stop the flow of the Holy Ghost more than anything else. And religion does not know how to live it consistent, consistently in the realms of the anointing. Just religion. It has no passion for God or very little. I'm talking about the righteousness which is by faith. I'm not talking about any kind of righteousness. 
I'm talking about the righteousness of God. I'm talking about God's very own righteousness. I'm not talking about a mystical righteousness. I'm not talking about a positional righteousness. I'm talking about a righteousness that is seen in our lives as a glory upon our face, as an anointing in our life, as a love and a disposition of our character. Hallelujah. I'm talking about, oh, brosan de lingi libis de baron every day, called into this realm of prayer because the Holy Ghost is there, and that's what he wants to do. I'm talking about loving the word, living off of the word, not having to do it because, you know, my goodness, it's a, you expose our religious duty. My goodness, help us, Lord Jesus. No hunger for the word, there's a problem. I tell you, there's a problem. When there's no hunger for the word, there's a problem. And I don't want you to have a problem. Mm hmm. Somebody said, I'd read the Bible and get a headache. I got the, I got the cure for that headache. <laughs> it's a manifestation. <laughs> Paul said in, in chapter 2 and in, in verse uh, 20, he said, I live by the faith of the Son of God. People, that's not esoteric. That's not mystical. That's not religious. That is a life of Christ Jesus living on the inside of us. That is a work of grace that has produced within our life the activity of heaven in our soul. Chapter 3. Verse, what is this? Verse 2. Verse 3. Verse 2. How we receive the Spirit by the hearing of faith. Verse 5. How do we work miracles? By the hearing of faith. It's not something that's esoteric. It's not something that's mystical. It's not something that's positional. It's an activity of our spirit responding to the Holy Spirit. It's an activity of the power of God being able to come and, 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 and change us and impact us. It's more than an influence. You could say it's an influence, but it's something that seizes our soul. Then verse 8, or, or just go to 7. Know ye therefore that they, that they which are of faith are you of faith? Are you of faith when it comes down to the concept of faith being an equal term of living in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit, of living as a new creation? Circumcision matters nothing. Uncircumcision matters nothing. A new creature, a new creation. It, are you, they are those who are of faith because you walk out this divine nature, walk in the light as he's in the light, not living for yourself, living for him, denying yourself so that Christ can live. Literally saying and having this as a conscious reality, I no longer live as Christ Jesus that lives. I don't live my own life. I don't make my own choices. I'm, I live for him. I'm not, to do, I'm not doing my own thing. I'm a, I'm a whole burnt offering. I'm an offering, living offering, sacrifice here, offered continually before the Lord with his fire constantly coming on me. And, and I mean, goodness, what do you look like when you got the fire of God on you anyway? What do you look like when you're shining with the light and the glory of heaven? What do you look like? Are you, 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 are the Lord showed me how to deal with problems that, that usually entrap a lot of people, a lot of Christians. You know, most, most people in the Western world, they've not been dipped in the, in the kerosene of His glory and lit on fire with His presence. Huh? They've been dipped in the circumstance of this life. Huh? 
and overwhelmed with its cares. You listen to me now. And that's why it's hard to yield to the Holy Ghost because you're all entangled with the affairs of this life. Now, what are you going to do about that? What are you going to do about that? And the Lord showed me, well, when all of these situations and, and problems and things come to try to steal your affections and steal your interest and take that ministry of the Holy Ghost that would have promoted you into a realm of trusting God and faith and moving by faith and calling in the finances and calling in the provision and moving in the miraculous, you get rather all entangled with the concern and the worry and the problem and the yoke of it. Well, what are you going to do when all you got all of those issues that come to bear in an everyday life? Well, I learned what to do from watching what God told him to do on the night of Passover. I mean, there's no pressure like hearing a bunch of people screaming because all the firstborn of every house is dying and the death, death angel is passing before every house. Huh? That's, pretty, that's a pretty big crisis going on, ain't it? Wouldn't you say, wouldn't you say that's, probably worse than a, than, that's probably a whole lot worse than a tsunami? Wouldn't you say, so, wouldn't you say that's worse than a hurricane? Wouldn't you say that? I, I, let's, are you listening to me? You know what God said to do? He said, recline, get a sit on the pillow, relax, eat something. <laughs> That's what he said. So I learned early on, and this is how I was able to step out and begin to be used by God more in faith because as soon as circumstances, problems, situations come and everybody wants to get pressure and get put pressure on you, <laughs> pressure, pressure, pressure. I, rec I just recline. <laughs> I just relax. Uh, I just have something to eat. I, just, I live carefree like a child. I've been converted. I've been converted. I have uh, and become like a little child. I have total trust and confidence in Father. I'm ready to go to heaven. Hallelujah. I, I, somebody said, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. If we fail, God's reputation is really going to be ruined. I said, no, 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 no. Father's reputation is going to remain perfectly intact. It's you that's going to be messed up. Okay? Get God out of it. Okay? You don't have to defend God's reputation. He's going to be just fine after you fail. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> So quit stressing about God. You don't, need, you don't need stress about Him. You're stressing about yourself. So now just come. Learn to me. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Come, come. Come in there and, come in and into the rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, oh, um, well, that's fine until the, the bill collector comes and who's going to pay the, the money? And then, um, mm. <laughs> you devil, you demon spirit, you power of doubt and unbelief. Yeah, as long as you allow that to work, you'll never move into miraculous faith. You'll never move into trusting God. You'll always have a reason. You'll always have an excuse. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, who's going to do it? We need you to do it. You do it. You do it because God, he's, he's a prisoner in his own heaven. He ain't going to be able to do it. Oh, that's all fine until the bill collector comes. <laughs> Are you listening to me here tonight? <laughs> People, you're going to you're gonna have with total abandonment serve God. Amen. Huh? You're going to have to be willing to step up and say to the bill collector, don't worry, the Lord's paying, his, he's good on his bills. He might be a little bit late this month. <laughs> but he's good on his bills. Well, I'm not interested in what God's got. I'm interested in what you got. Don't worry. Everything he's got is mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just, I'm growing in faith. Go ahead and confess it. I'm growing in faith. No, 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 no. Not now. <laughs> in that situation. Go, I'm growing in faith, and that's why the money's a little bit late. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to weary or waver. Amen. <laughs> Just stick with me because I'm going to move and grow into faith where we'll be on time every time. Amen. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you won't be getting yourself into debt that God hadn't called you to get into either. Hmm? Amen. Amen. 
for me, I'm going to take, I'm just bring down, I'm bring down like this. If I had to make a choice between taking care of the bills for the church and having a place to stay, I'd take care of the bills of the church. True. I would find a place on the floor. I mean, where, where is your priorities? When you're talking about, when you're talking about who's going to pay the bills, when you're talking about how to move in the miraculous, when you're talking about how to move in faith, when you've got all these excuses going on in your head, all these what-ifs scenarios. Huh? Watch out, people. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're going to have to, with total abandonment, come and learn how to trust God. Huh? Even if it costs you your life. You're going to have to do that. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck. Otherwise, you're never going to move on. Otherwise, you're going to always be entangled with the cares of the life, and you're going to depend upon what the arm of flesh can get you. And you will not live the life of the Spirit that, that God has purposed for each one of us to live in, to be prosperous, to prosper and be in health, even as they're so prosperous. The only reason that there, are, that there is lack in any dimension is because there's a lack in soul prosperity. There's a lack and growth and maturity in the spirit, in other words. So who's going to get desperate about growth and maturity in the spirit? I mean, I've been blessed. I've really been blessed at how many people have been coming to the school of the spirit. I wish everyone would come to the school of the spirit. But I'm blessed by the ones that do come to the school of the spirit on Friday night. And I thought, well, you know, if we just did it every other week, then maybe more people would find time to prioritize God. Can I say it that way? Because I'm not a politician. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I say it that way so you can examine what it is that is more important to you? Because that, because certainly you don't think you already know. Certainly, you don't think you're already there, so I'm just going to put it where in the category that it is in. There's other things more important to you. I, I, you know, I really believe with all of my heart that God's people have got to be challenged like this. I know that it is absolutely not popular. I know that it doesn't fit into any church growth models. from a human perspective. But I do know that it does fit into Father's church growth model. I do know and do believe that what the prophetess Deborah O oh was saying the other night, as I see all of you as missionaries, is true. Because I see that, I believe that. That God would take you in, into every different area of this nation, in every different area of this world, and that you're going to have, you could either go there already prepared or you can get there and get prepared. My advice is to go prepared. It's going to be a lot easier on you. <laughs> then, you know, I mean, really having been established in the things of the Spirit to speak faith. Hallelujah. To animal sterete, understand a tongue, a ministry of tongues that take you right into the word of knowledge, that take you right into prophecy, that take you right into love, that take you right into faith, the gift of faith, the working of faith. Not just a tongue that just whatever, I don't know why sometimes I don't know what is people, why are they speaking, why are people speaking in tongues? Where is the excelling? Because if you don't fundamentally understand the doctrine of tongues is that tongues is to, is there for the purpose of you excelling into a manifestation of a work and gifting of God that benefits everybody around you. That is fundamental to the doctrine of faith. Will at least turn in to an exuberant praise and worship coming out of your belly, glorifying God for all of his wonderful works. It's not going to leave you sad, dejected, and blank stare person.
Oh, mighty God. Oh, Ramana Gisa Rana Nagede. Oh, Mamala Namigi di Tura. So, Benina la Bikata. Mongling la Mangalista Peraneti. Want to see how many people can smile and how many people are just going to get sad? Uh, a person said, Well, we we're just so happy because the church service ended early. <laughs> and uh, I said to the preacher, I said, Well, I said, You tell those people that it's their fault. Because we're supposed to preach until there's a manifestation of the Spirit, and they've been more yielded. The church service would have ended long ago. It's true. <laughs> Sometimes meetings are like pulling on a mule. The more you pull on the mule, the more the mule fights and digs his, huh? Huh? And digs his, digs his hooves into the dirt. And so a lot of preachers just say, well, you know, this is a hard night. We're going to go ahead. It's hot potato. Listen, throw it over to you. We're just gonna end, end, we're in early tonight. People are not doing well. Not me, man. No, no, I get something. To, I get something to come up behind it. Hey, wait around for the. I don't wait around for the wood to get warm. I go get some gas. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not good at all concerned about my Boy Scout skills. <laughs> I tell you, you sit there, you play around with your sticks. I'm gonna pour some gas on it, throw a piece of mat, throw a match there, and we'll have a fire while you sit up there trying to work it out. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Ah, Sataya, Mungjaya, Mangleya, Shiki Nakaya, Tayo de Boshe, Mangadeshi to Yatai, Mundaya, Mundabea, he proved Tai, Mun Lake Jay Utai. Whether you felt it or not, we threw some gas just a few seconds ago. Mun La Sataya, Bolom Munzan, the Daya, Holy Ghost gas of the Spirit. Yeah, there's a realm of heaven right now, right at this very moment working, that will make you feel so good you haven't felt this good. Huh. And then I'm going to convince you that you can feel like this all the time, and it even gets better. This just taste. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to talk to you people about what it means to walk and live in the righteousness which is by faith. I'm going to get you out of the religious ideology of the righteousness which is by faith and help you understand that there is a realm where you can live in and walk in the Spirit, where you can have days of heaven upon the earth, where you can fellowship with a living God who tabernacles on the inside of you. You're going to have to get out of your head, out of your mind, stop doing things your own way. You're going to have to put God first. You're going to have to take a hold of the Word of the God. Know that it's living. And understand that your conversation to the Lord it may be foolish to you, but it's not foolish to Him. You may think you're just speaking out into the air, but you're not. It's ascending up to the throne of heaven. And when you say, Lord, I put on Christ today. Lord Jesus, I put you on right now to make no provision for the flesh. God hears it. He answers it. He honors it. He equips you. And you find yourself living a different kind of life. People walk around gagged by Satan. they silent by the working powers of darkness. And therefore, they have no hookup with divine power because they're not willing to speak it out their mouth. This word of life, 
God has put his words in your mouth. When your word, his word goes out, it produces the hearing of faith that produces a supernatural working of grace, not just for people around you, for yourself, because it's an activity, it's a miraculous thing that God has given to us, the ability to speak out and be heard in the throne room of heaven. That is the righteousness, which is by faith. It is a grace that has been given. It's time that God's people open up their mouth and speak. It's time that God's people believe something very fundamental that when they pray, God hears them. That when they make a request, Father answers. And it's just, there's way too much asking amiss, asking a fantasy. Asking things that only belong to one's own personal selfish interest and fleshly lust. And we try to call it God's will for our life because he wants us to all, you know, be whatever. What Father wants us to pray and ask are things that are most important for our life, things that are very fundamental to his will. Holy Spirit, I give myself completely over to your rule and to your mastery, Lord. Take complete control of my life. I want to live in you and live by you. I want to walk in your divine glory all day long. I want your love to be manifested through me, your purity to take hold of me. I want authority over every demon spirit, insight to see every trick of Satan that lies in wait to deceive me. Father, here's that. Now you got yourself a prayer life for real. It's not, oh, Lord, we pray, bless mom, bless dad. God, help the boss to like us better. God, all that nonsense, Jesus, help us. Oh, God. People just find us, sit around and pray in the Holy Ghost for an hour, two hours, three hours. But it should come to a passion and prayerful insight Thing, insightful things directed by the Holy Ghost. Oh, I mean, I really wanted Deborah to, I wanted her to minister on, on Sunday night on prayer. How She'll tell you, she stopped worse. She believes in her prayers. She stopped natural disasters and events. I mean, I place, if you know who Jenny Wilkerson is, I place Deborah even in a higher realm above Jenny Wilkerson because though Jenny had a powerful effect as a prophetess on the church, I've seen Deborah O's impact on nations, and so has many others. And I, I just wanted her to minister on the power of prayer and intercession. She said, no, I want to do, I'm going to stay, because she was supposed to leave on Tuesday afternoon. No, I'm going to stay, and I'm going to minister on it for those who come for the school worship. She told me, she said, I came here. She said, she woke up, and she, she woke up the other morning, and she said, in our house, she said, I came, the Lord told me why I came, now I know more clearly why I came, that intercession and prayer may be established in the abiding place. I said, come on, girl, get her done. Get her, get her done. And yeah, is she anointed? Yeah. And is Father willing to do that? And does he want to do it? Yeah. But who's receptive? Who will go? Who will receive? Who recognizes the will of the Father? What's in Papa's heart? Because we want, we want Papa to have in his heart what's in our heart. This is what I want you to do. <laughs> well, that ain't going to work that. That ain't going to work out. That ain't the way it goes down with Dad and Son. Huh? And especially in this context, it's about doing Father's will because he knows what we, we need. He knows, he, he's got our interests in mind. We go crying out to God, oh God, use me. Oh God, if I ask you for the gifting of the Spirit, for miracles, signs, wonders, saving the nations, whatever, you know. He says, okay, well, we got to have this and this and this and this established. But then nobody wants to do that. <laughs> they just want to continue to holler out and God do something and then wonder why God didn't do it. Wait a minute. He answered the prayer right off. It's just that folks weren't willing to cooperate with him and receive the things that he has to have foundationally in our lives, in our midst, in order to be able to do those things that we've asked him to do. Oh, 
God has ordained that we bring forth the fruit that whatever we ask, he'll do it. He's committed to that. We, we, we miss out on the reality that things have to be put in the proper place, that things have to be received and done according to his way and his will. And if we're going to get a hold of that, we're going to get really tender. We're going to get really tender. And we're going to recognize that God speaks to us by ministers that he's placed over us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's true. And then we recognize people aren't just coming in here by accident because I called them up. They're calling me up, man. They're calling me up. They're telling me they need to come. Because Father's sending them. Sometimes I know. I rarely call up anyone. They can always call me up. Some people, I say, well, look, I just don't feel it's the time because they wait on the Lord. Just let the Lord explode in the spirit. But, I, or, but I'm always very, very sensitive. You know, one of the most important things, so you got to be, there's a lot of things you've got you to have as principle in your life. If you're not given to hospitality, you miss out on a lot of things from God. I, I, I can go through a list of things that way that if you don't have it in your character, it's not established in your life, you'll miss out because you'll make judgments after a human nature, after a human understanding, fit within your schedule, within the framework of what you're doing. You won't just stop everything because I'll stop everything. Father, stop everything for me. Can you imagine God, Papa, will stop everything for you? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? That you put everything on hold for you? That he loves you that much that he's that concerned about you? What happens when we begin to realize these things? What happens when we begin to grow and mature enough to where we can see into the unseen realm? I've got so many more scriptures that I would like to share with you here in Galatians, just on the righteousness by faith. But, you know, oh, just, I mean, great stuff. But I want to jump over to Romans chapter 11. But before I do, I am going to read this one. <laughs> Galatians chapter 4 says, But before faith came, say before faith came. Before faith came. Before faith came, we were shut up under the law. Who, would, who is faith? When did faith come? Where is this faith? What is this faith? This is the faith that is by Jesus Christ. This is the faith that is not by the law. This is the faith that is by the Lord Jesus Christ, which has come to us, the righteousness which is by faith, this life that is by faith. Before faith came, before faith came, we were kept under the law. We were shut out from faith. Shut in to a place, or rather, forgive me, shut away into a place reserving us to wait for the faith. We were just under the law. He's talking about people of Israel. He's saying, sit right here. The faith is coming. Stay right here. Be my people. The faith is coming. Before faith come, before faith came. All the law did was enclose the people into a realm and keep them there waiting for the day when faith would appear. Are you with me? Waiting for the day when faith would appear. And when faith appeared, heaven came and transformed the lives of people so that they would become the household of faith. They would become citizens of heaven, heirs and co-inheritors with God himself, sharing in his glory and his nature, given his own spirit, given his own attribute to nature, to interact with him in a way that angels can't interact with him. To see who the Nile we are. 
if our eyes open up to this, we'll seize it, we'll lay hold of it, it will become our passion, it will become our desire. And when Father sees that, a realm, it's like immediately, instantly, a door is opened unto you and you step into a realm of glory. There are many people who are shut up. They're entrapped in religion, just like Israel was shut up, enclosed within the framework of the law, waiting for the day that faith would be revealed. We want faith to be revealed to you. We want the realms of living in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit. <laughs> Understanding how to respond to the Holy Spirit, recognize His presence. How do, I, how do I do that? How do I get skilled to recognize His presence? How do I get skilled to respond to Him? You give yourself to the things of the Spirit. If you give yourself to the things of the natural, if you give yourself to the things of, of earthly desires, earthly cares, you're going to get strong there. You'll get skilled there. You may become an expert in all the various different disciplines of men. But if you give yourself to the realms of the Holy Ghost, sowing into the realms of the things of the Spirit, there is a reaping. And that's sowing clearly in Galatians chapter 6. He's not just talking. In fact, he's really talking more about how you give to those who minister to you. He did. He says, let those who are receiving give to those. Those who are being ministered to give to those who are ministering. Understanding that there's a reciprocation going on. You want to participate in this. It's not buying nothing, but it's a participating, participating, a hooking up with the anointing. But it's on every level. It's how do you serve the anointing. I watch people all the time. They want to increase in the anointing, but they don't know how to serve the anointing. They won't, they won't respect and honor the anointing enough to serve it. They want to do it their own way. Well, I'm just not comfortable with that. Well, you need to get comfortable with it quickly. You're not comfortable with serving someone who's got a greater manifestation of the power of God in their life? You don't understand. Something's not, something's, there's a disconnect inside. And I'm going to say this. The disconnect is not necessarily because you've not been born again. The disconnect is because, can be, you've been born again, you've got a new spirit, but now you're allowing pride and arrogance and stubborn and self, stubbornness and self-will to begin to take over because you know nothing about practicing denying yourself. Because you know nothing fundamentally about when you, this yourself is being manifested. There, very few, I hate to say this, but my observation is this. Very few of God's people have been willing to step into the counsel of the Holy Ghost and receive wisdom from Him enough to know the difference between their self and the realms of the Holy Ghost. And that is a great tragedy because that just speaks of a state of total immaturity and babyhood. As soon as you grow and mature in the things of the Holy Ghost, you become very familiar what the Holy Spirit is doing. You become familiar with how to yield to Him, how to interact with Him, how to function with Him, how does it were to put up the sail, you know, because it is as the wind. Right? He just put up the sail, as it were, and now he takes you where he wills. You know how to put up the sails, basically, because you give yourself to the things of the Spirit. And then the contrast is very clear. This is the realm of self. My things, what I want to do, what's convenient for me. This is, where, this is why I'm acting like a three-year-old, even though I'm 30, kind of thing. Are you with me? And reluctantly, I know. person said to me, yeah, no adult wants to be told to act like a child. I said, yeah, truth hurts. Thanks, son. But there's a great, there's a lot of, at stake here. There's the souls of men is the point. There's, it's a lot of stake, at stake here. The advancement of the kingdom of God, the moving forward with the things that, of, of Father's will and plan. You're not moving forward with Father's will and plan in your life until you learn how to flow in the anointing. 
And as soon as you learn how to flow in the anointing, as soon as you learn how to plug into that realm, it's going to be continual. I mean, you talk about exponential growth. It's going to be continual growth. There's going to be a measurable increase in anointing. I'll use Joshua for an example. He's going to be here this weekend. I'm excited about that. But I remember when the Lord anointed him for music. I remember when the anointing came upon him. But the anointing was not put up, did not come upon him in vain. He gave, when the anointing came upon him, we all who were around him witnessed something. He gave himself to the music. He didn't just practice for the meeting. He gave himself to it. Uh, you know, the, I was listening to some, some statistics. The 70% of preachers download their sermons from the Internet. 70%. The statistics on how many preachers, and then you've got to break out how many were actually being honest, actually study the Bible without preparing for a sermon was just bigger than I even want to quote. I don't even want to believe it. I don't even want to come out of my mouth. The only motive to study the Word of God is to create and devise and design a sermon. I mean, if that doesn't, if that doesn't speak volumes, I just couldn't even believe it. I'd say, look, please tell me that these are live. These people giving themselves to church statistics. I watched as he would go continually and spend hours. No one asked him to do it. I didn't ask him to do it. Hours and then learning his instrument and then take it even further and and then and, and then going to give himself to excellence. I watched as I saw before me things that even challenged my own life to say, wait a minute, am I pursuing the anointing in my life and giving myself to the anointing that God has given me like that? Because I can reflect back on Paul who said, and the grace of God was not bestowed upon me in vain, but I labored more than them all. You see, there's a big difference here between just having a shout, Holy Ghost, woo glory to God, <laughs> meeting. And I'm happy for that. I mean, that's fine, whatever, you know. Run around the place, hallelujah, man, this feels great, because it does feel great. <laughs> Being in the presence of the Lord feels great. I love the peace, I love the love, I love the joy, I love the excitement, I love it all. I love the shout, I love the dance, I love the quiet. I mean, I love it all. There's no part of God I don't love. I mean, I give me, give me every, I take everything. I don't want just a slice. Give me the whole thing. But there's another thing of saying, now that I have this, I understand what God has given me. How do I give myself? Somebody said, I really want prophecy in my life. Me too. That's why I gave myself to prophecy. Guess what I did? I went to prayer. I gave myself to praying. I gave myself to worshiping because I wanted prophecy in my life. Ah, my, my mouth then in that place was filled with the word of the Lord. And then out of that became now sermons and messages. And then out of that came the, came the whole springboard of revelation and everything else started happening in that context. It's not just sitting around and making it convenient for me and saying, God, now I'm, now I'm ready for you. Come do it all through me. You don't have the capacity. If God start moving just a little bit and you're going to go out in a coma, you're going to get knocked out because you don't have the capacity to receive the anointing and stand in it. You just get knocked right out on the floor. As soon as the power of God comes on you to begin to minister in a higher level, you go bang, you're out on the floor. Nobody, you're not even useful. It's like those guys that were translating for me in Alexandria, Egypt. Was, uh, they got up there, stood, stood beside me. And as soon as they stood beside me and started ministering, trying to translate for me, they went mute. They never had no encounter with the anointing. And Father, we made sure that they were going to experience what, I was, go what was going on with me because they didn't want any manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit while I was ministering. <laughs> so they, they got more than they asked, bargained for. That's what happens when you don't want any manifestation of the Spirit. I said, I won't have any manifestation of the Spirit. I didn't say the Holy Ghost wasn't going to have any manifestation of the Spirit. He took complete control. 
I did not speak one syllable of aratatapadadi. Not one syllable. Not one. Not one syllable of tongues. Huh? And the Lord did other things. Dear people, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? When you, when, when, when you stand, oh, and you pray, oh, Lord, do you know, Father, that I seek you more than anything else? You know, Father, that your kingdom is more important to me than anything else. Is he going to say, you lying? Is he going to say, you lying to me now? That's not, you're not worshiping me in truth. You lying. That's why most people say, oh, Lord, I want to. And then I'm wondering, are they li still lying? <laughs> Lord, I want to seek you more than anything else. Lord, I want your kingdom to be more important to me than anything else. Are you lying? Are, no, are, you, are you really willing to give yourself completely to these things? Hallelujah. The person had a dream. I get to preach and the wind starts blowing and people start getting blown out of the place. Some people have to try to grab, hold the door, hang on. I don't want to go. Because the wind's blowing. Believe in me, the wind is blowing. Why? Because Father's looking. He's looking. He's going to challenge us. He's going to say, well, wait, wait a minute. I want you to reevaluate. So we can all reevaluate here. Huh? We can say, wait a minute now. I'm going to reevaluate here. Did the anointing come upon me and get poured out upon me in vain? Maybe you can't say, I've labored more than in them all. Well, can you say that you've labored? I believe that most people in here could say that you have labored in general. But have you received an anointing in a special area of gifting and then given, labored, given yourself to it to see that anointing perfected in your life and matured in your life? And then the next question is, do you know how? And do you know the laws of it? And do you know the things that would violate that the activity of the anointing in your life? The things that would hinder the flow of the Holy Ghost should you allow them in your life? That's what we here teach you. That's what we've been trying our very best to teach you. That's what I've been laboring night and day, crying out to God, oh God, raise up the people. Father, we need to have those who know how to move by the Spirit, that know how to pray. When you say pray, that, know, that are willing to be awakened. I'm going to tell you right now, stuff will come shining real bright about 3 o'clock in the morning when the Holy Ghost is trying to wake you up and you're going to leave me alone. I'm sleepy. I'm sleeping now. Are you, are you able to be nudged by the Holy Ghost? And rise up and begin to pray. Well, I am. And my wife is, because she gets right up with me. What are we doing now? I don't know. We're going to pray till the peace comes up. And then while we just thought, we'll just pray. Just stay right there. Because we feel something. We feel, we don't know what it is, but we feel a disturbance. We feel a concern. We feel there's something wrong. And we just stay right there. We're going to try to get in our imagination, our thinking. We're over here in the Holy Ghost. He woke us up and now we're going to flow in Him because we know how to hook up with Him and He'll tell us what we need to know and we're going to leave the rest to Him. Because we're going to pray till the peace comes, but most of the time what happens is we'll get right in it. Oh, this is what it is. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And suddenly we begin to change things that otherwise Satan would have taken and uh, advantage against us. Satan puts things on your lives that he has no right to put on. But because of your unwillingness to hear God and respond to the Holy Spirit, your unwillingness to pay attention to the things that God the Holy Ghost would instruct you in, he, Satan gets away with it. Because you don't understand the laws of the Spirit. You don't understand the violations of things of the Spirit. And that's what we're here to teach you. You've got to be willing to learn. We want to teach you the righteousness which is by faith. The faith that came when Jesus came. The faith that is now right here ours. It is a realm of living. Jesus said this. He said, if I cast out devils by the Spirit of the living God, by the Holy Spirit, then the kingdom of God has come. That is the realm. It is a faith realm. 
I don't have time to go into Romans, I mean, to Hebrews chapter 11, but I am going to say this. I'm going to say this. God appeared to Noah, warning him of a flood to come. Noah then, moving by faith, concerning things which he was not able to see, prepared an ark. Look at faith at work. Faith is not esoteric. Faith is not positional. It's active. It moves at the revelation of God, participates with it, and gives them, that person gives themselves fully to the activity of what faith brought. We see the same thing then with Abraham. And I just want to read that real quickly to you just so you can go back and you can read because what happens if you'll give yourself to reading the Word of God, what will happen is it won't be long and revelation will begin to work in your life. If you give yourself to reading the Word of God continually, you want to know. He'll train you. He'll grow you up. He'll mature you. He'll begin to come and the Holy Spirit Himself will begin to teach you things because He sees that you will personally apply it to your life and do it and follow in the same kind of faith and move in the same kind of divine will of the Father. When Father sees that about your life, I'm tell you right now, things are just going to open up. But if all you want to do is be entertained, I'm telling you, you're not going to get much. Huh? If it doesn't going to count, it's not going to count. Well, I've already, I've already poured out 100 gifts upon them, and they're not done with anything with any of them. And they're asking for more. More what? Oh, more what? More what? Yeah, by the way, what more? maybe that is it. Wow, that's a good question. Uh, <clears throat> what do you want more of? What is it that you want more of? I want more of God. Specifically, what do you mean you want more of God? Because he's already told us how we can walk in all of his fullness. Huh? Uh, me, 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 what people need to say is, I probably need to say is, look, you know, I need, just need, I just need to get right. I need to get, I need to get serious with the Lord. I want to get serious with God. I want to get more serious with God. That would be a much better pray, prayer to pray. I want to get real with God. Verse 8, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place where he should after receive an inheritance, obeyed and went out not knowing where he was going. See all the uncertainty there? Noah was moved. He was, was, was warned of the Lord concerning things which weren't seen. See that in verse 7? Warned of the Lord concerning things which not seen. He needed the scene of the eye. The word of the Lord was good enough to get him moving. Huh? We're talking about faith. We're talking about the faith realm. We're talking about the righteousness which is by faith here. We're talking about moving with the word of the Lord. Moving with the spirit of the Lord. Abraham. Going to a place that all he had for proof, all he had was for proof, was the word of the Lord. Went out not knowing where he was going. By faith. Through the activity of believing God and trusting God and moving with God, he sojourned in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and with Jacob. And of course, ultimately, the Lord lays out for us all of these great men who moved according to the word of God, did what God said and gave themselves completely with total abandonment over to it, dedicating themselves only that for that one single purpose. It culminates into Jesus in Hebrews chapter 12. Now looking unto the author and finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. After having, you know, gone through Hebrews chapter 11 and looked at, looking at all these people who consecrated, holy given to God. And I'm calling you tonight about holy given to God. I'm talking to you about not letting the grace of God be bestowed upon you in vain. And not looking back, but looking forward, saying, I'm taking hold of these things tonight. I'm giving myself to this realm. God sees. God hears. To have that revelation, to have that simple revelation that Hagar had. God sees me. To have that simple revelation. He hears you. To just simply have that revelation of faith. That those that come to God must believe that he is. That he's right there. He exists. He's listening. He's standing waiting for our interaction with them. And that he rewards those who are continually there petitioning, interacting, wanting, coming to him, seeking him, desiring him. People act like seeking God is a one-time event thing. Oh, well, I'm seeking God so I can have this one-time event of finding him. No, you seek God every time you need him. And every time you need him, he'll show up if you seek him. Yeah, if, if, every time you need him, you seek him. And he'll come with his delivering, providing goodness and grace. To supply whatever we have need of because he's promised and God wants you to prove him. And one of the things he says about proving him, he starts off with us just proving him with our money. I mean, I don't know that there's many people on the earth today that has proven God with their money. Because, I mean, once you engage in really proving God, he opens up the windows of heaven and gives you more than you can contain. I haven't run into those folks lately that have more than they can contain. I'd like to. I pray that you would be one of them. I pray that you'll, I pray that you'll run with a group of faith because when the Lord gets finished in Hebrews chapter 11, it culminates there into seeing you have a great cloud of witnesses. <laughs> huh? Seeing you surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses. You better watch out. You better watch out. You better make sure that you're not carrying some weight, dragging some weight trying to run. Huh? You got a thousand pound weight trying to run. You're going nowhere. Or dragging any kind of weight. It's going to stop you. You ain't going to move in faith, doubt and unbelief. Faith. We, Galatians said, faith is works by love. A faith, a justification by faith. He's talking about a justification by faith, a living faith, a faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, a faith that came when Jesus came, a faith that has been given to us that we're no longer shut out from, but actually participating with is a faith that works by love. But watch out. You better lay aside the weights. You better understand. You better identify for yourself very clearly what the weights are. Otherwise, you're going to have them and not know it. <laughs> And that's the state of things, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. And the sin, which so easily will be, so which can, the sin which will without effort beset you, set you back. Huh? I don't be set back. I'll move forward. I'm talking about getting something done. Not, not, having, to, not having to have a remedial class. Not having to, not as, my goodness gracious, how long are you going to stay in first grade? Huh? That's a terrible thing. That's a terrible thing. 18-year-old guy sitting in there with all them 6-year-olds. How long you been in first grade? Well, I've been here since I was six. <laughs> You'd work harder than that. What if we were all looking like, what if we were all looking like that? What if we were all looking like that? In the spirit, wait, think about it in a minute. What if we were all looking like that? What if it was actually worse? What if we were like all 30 in nursery? I mean, in the heavenly realm, when everybody, the great cloud of witnesses, are looking for some champions of the earth, you know? They're standing there, you know, shouting out over the balcony of heaven, and the whole church is all in the nursery. <laughs> Doing nursery things. Jesus Jesus. And Papa wants right now. He wants it right now. Not to anoint a few, but many. Not just a few, but many. Oh, yeah, even a great army. That truly would participate with this that which Papa, which Father wants to do. 
a nameless, faceless groove of his people who run with the power and the authority of the word. God made that so real to me in 1981. 1980 to 1981, I did not want my name on any booklet or anything that I wrote. I want my name not even to be in the category or mentioned. No pictures of me because God's going to use a nameless, faceless people. God's going to have a company of folks in, from whom only Christ Jesus would be revealed. The power and the glory of God would shine forth from. But that is a fantasy, people, unless you give yourself to laboring to see that come to pass, unless you give yourself to understanding, I recognize I am in the school of the Spirit and I'm going to have to mind the things of the Spirit if I'm going to grow and mature in this realm. Otherwise, just fantasy will never profit you. Faith will not profit you. Faith will not profit you if it's the word of God will not profit you. The promises of God will not profit you. Until it's mixed with faith in those who hear it. And then I understand what mixed with faith. Moved on by God concerning things not seen. I don't need to see it. I know God said to do it. Therefore, I will devote myself solely to this purpose. Moved on by God. Hear the Lord. Go out. I don't know where I'm going. I can't plan for it. Don't tell me that Abraham was a dummy either. Huh? He was a man of faith. You can be, you don't have to be dumb, a dummy to be bold. But you do have to be total abandonment, trust the Lord. He gave himself completely to it. He saw, he got a glimpse of heaven. He got, Geneva, he got a glimpse of heaven. He got a glimpse of heaven. I've had a glimpse of heaven. I've had a glimpse of the possibility. I have a, I've had a glimpse of what God would do with my life. I've had a glimpse that unimaginable things on the scale of the ministry of Jesus Christ, unimaginable things on the scale of standing representing the living God would be manifested through my life to the nations of the earth should I seek him, should I learn how to live by the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. And when it became real to me, my, 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 anytime I saw the anointing, you got my, you got me, I'm camped out. I'm, I'm, I'm warming my hands by it. I'm getting close to it. I'm so seizing it that it's impossible to refuse me. I'm saying this because I'm asking you to come follow me. You can't stand before the Lord and say, we didn't have a model. We didn't have an example. We didn't have anybody like that who were going to have, have a... You know that meetings that go... Meetings like we started here tonight, it's very rare. Standing here just... Singing in the Spirit, letting the goodness of God and the glory of God overwhelm us. Just letting God, the Holy Ghost, have free course, just a total abandonment, saying, oh God, Lord, I don't need to say nothing here tonight. I, I came here, er, I mean, I came, you know, earlier today, I was saying, Lord, I don't need to say, I don't need to preach nothing tonight. Lord, I just don't, I don't want to anoint the mouth, anoint the ear, anoint the heart to understand, anoint the ear to hear, anoint the mouth to speak, anoint the heart to understand. Lord, you know, I don't want nothing coming out of my mouth. I want to hear from you. Lord, I don't care who you use. Lord, just, Father, speak, oh God, your glory. Do set things in order so that you can have your way. Set things in order so you can have your way. People want God to have his way, and things aren't in order. Don't work that way. God says, take heed according to the pattern. You make sure you do it just like I revealed it. It's got to be like I revealed it. It's got to be like I chose it to be. Jesus has got to be the cornerstone. The Holy Spirit has to be in charge. The company of people have got to be willing to come into a place of giving themselves to walking in love and walking out a realm of humility. I mean, when you walk in love, you don't have suspicion. I'm telling you right now, there's no suspicion in love. There's no jostling one against another. There's no finger point. There's no accusation. Love works no ill. If you follow me on Facebook today, the Lord spoke to me so strong. I was, you know, I was out scrubbing my car. And, you know, sometimes when I'm just, sometimes it's like when I'm just going at work and doing something. 
some kind of, you know, manual labor. It's like the Lord speaks to me so strong. I don't know, it's very interesting. He spoke to me, he said, many people are going to be surprised on that day, Mark. They're doing all these things and I'm going to hold them accountable for how they walked in love and kept covenant. There's nothing more important to Father. Nothing more important to Father. And the kind of love he wants us to walk in is only possible by the Holy Ghost. It's the righteousness which is by faith. It's living in the Spirit now. Walking the Spirit, being made t the temples of the living God, the habitation of the Lord, the place where God himself dwells. Do I love the joy? I love the joy. Do I love the love? I love the love. Do I love the peace? I love the peace. Do I love the manifest presence? I absolutely do. Do I love it in church? I absolutely do. I love it at church. I love it at home. Deborah was sitting in our house today and it just blessed us so much. She says, I honestly do not want to leave this place. I want to stay here. Can I stay here? I mean, she's like, for good. Why? Because the, the, the glory of God's in my house. The anointing of God. You lay down on my bed, you want to get zapped by the power of God. That's just all there is to it. It's true. There's none of people lay down on my bed, slept in my bed, going to get hit by the power of God because I'm laying I'm a holy vessel of God. I'm laying in there on the bastaquila masakura part day. And in no religious thing, I'm under the influence of a divine power of grace. I'm under the influence of the divine God himself called the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, he fills my house, he fills the atmosphere of my house. Hallelujah. Even when I'm watching the Golf Channel. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Even when I'm watching Turner Classic movies. When I'm watching Shoot 'em Up Cowboys, 20 Mules in the Desert. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I'm going to tell you right now, if anything else goes on, it's going to be violated. If the lasciviousness goes on, if the ungodliness goes on, the people... Get, and people, you better, well, you better watch out what you're watching. Because I already understand people don't know how to hear from the Holy Ghost enough. As it is, they're not going to be able to hear him correct them. And I can hear, hear, hear Holy Ghost conviction. Oh, oh, so wonderful to walk with them. So wonderful to think that we can go to Mongolia and shake that nation. It's so wonderful. It's so wonderful that we could know that we're standing here tonight hearing the word of the Lord. We were with responsive hearts saying, oh, we know that we can actually make up the hedge. We can intercede for the city. Though we may not see a great harvest coming in right now, we know that we can stand in this place crying out to God, saying, Lord, we only live in for your will. Oh, God, use us and give ourselves over completely to a measurable increase in the anointing, not just sitting around saying, I know, you know, making ourselves to be more than what we are, okay? But believing that we have this role of responsibility and seeing a measurable cooperation of the anointing in a, a measurable co co cooperation with the Holy Ghost by the anointing that is manifested, that manifested in our life. Hallelujah. I was going to do communion tonight. Didn't get that done. The righteousness, which is by faith. The righteousness which is by the faith of Jesus Christ. The faith of Jesus Christ that came, washed us from our sin. And made us a new creation. With old things having all passed away. Listen to me. If you allow the old things to be in your life, your soul is in jeopardy. Because the faith... The righteousness which is by the faith of Jesus Christ said the old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new and all things are of God. Therefore, you and I must make a demand of ourselves. The old things don't belong here. We must understand 
the fleshly lust war against our soul. We must understand it. We must understand that all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, is at war against the anointing in our life. It's at war against the Spirit of the Lord. It's at war against the Holy Ghost. That's why Paul says that the, that the flesh has a strong desire contrary to the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost has a strong desire contrary to the flesh so that these two will never be in agreement. They are completely separated one from another. It's two different realms. Two different, totally different realms. We've got to recognize that it's two different realms and decide with our own will. And you listen to me. This is why some people in this place need to give themselves to fasting. You need to understand a little bit more about your body being buffeted instead of buffeted. Because when that old hunger is gnawing at you and that thirst is gnawing at you, you feel like you're going to die because you're so thirsty. And you say, no, I'm consecrated to the Lord. I'm not giving place to it. God uses that to strengthen the will. To say, I'm not giving place to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye. I'm not giving place to the, lust, the, the, the fleshly lust that war against my soul. I'm not giving place to the suggestion of Satan. It says, if you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. No, I live by the word of God. I'm only living by the word of God. I'm not speaking my own word. I speak the word and live the word and do the word. It's amazing to me how many people justify all kinds of things saying that God did it. And it's so contrary to his, or that God told him to do something or God set something up completely and totally div- contrary to his divine order. See, we're going to have to live by the word. We're going to have to understand that the consecration of it. See, consecration is a much more important word. Consecration is far more important to us than discipline. See, consecration is a surrender to God. Discipline is something that may smack of human ability. Sometimes I, when I say consecration, people don't get it. So sometimes we'll slip in the word discipline to try to help people recognize, no, you, you've got to be willing to do this. But we're saying you're, you've got to be willing to completely resign yourself over to the Lord. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in Jesus' name. Let there be no wars. Let there be no battles. Let there be no struggle. Let there be no strife. In Jesus' name. Okay, no master holiday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Koja Bangale. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands towards heaven here. Thank you, Jesus. Just, you know, it's very easy to walk with the Lord. It's very easy to walk with the Lord. It's very hard to walk with you. If it's just not good, that's you with you. If it's good, that's you with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It's a, it, it's an, it's. <laughs> Somebody said, why do I feel so bad? Because you need to take a drink. I need to take a drink. Well, how do I do that? Just begin to lift up your voice and tell the Lord how desperate you are for his presence. How hard is that? That ain't hard. Oh, God, I'm desperate for your presence. And you just you, you get there until, you stay there until, huh? Until it gets stronger and louder and something starts happening. Huh? And, you, and then, then you start just, I don't know. I, Unfortunately, I don't have to say that. I just say, say thank you for your, I thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Because I live in that faith realm. But if you haven't, if you're not been living in that faith realm, you say, Lord, I'm desperate for your presence. And he'll bring you into a place where you live in the, that faith realm where you say, Lord, thank you for his presence. Thank you for his presence immediately. 
People, we, God, we, we, we need to have you moving in faith. We need to have you walking in faith. We, we need, you're not going to move in faith and walk in faith, I'm telling you right now, until the foundation of righteousness by faith is understood. And there's a pattern in your life, a commitment in your life. It's understood to be walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit. No, you no longer live in, but Christ Jesus living. Out of that realm, faith gets strong. Faith gets mighty. Faith gets powerful. Faith gets active. And if, you just, if there's just a little bit of it, I mean, the Lord's always swinging the pendulum with just a little bit of it, just a little bit of it. She can move mountains. Now just think about what happens when you've got all faith. Amen. Oh. With a little bit of it, nothing is impossible. Now what happens when, you, when all faith is coming and all faith is in Christ Jesus? It's mother daughter night. Today. Hallelujah. Uh, now, Father, we thank you. I thank you for the blessing upon Nikki. Father, I thank you for the ability to step over in another realm of faith. Hallelujah. To know where her department is and where your department is. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Not try to do your work for you. Amen. But just to move in faith. I command you in Jesus' name. I charge you in Jesus' name to move in faith. I'm telling you, woman, you're going to create these things, this wealth for the kingdom. I know you are. I see it. You're not going to spend it on yourself. I see it. I see it. I see it. Others have seen it. I'm telling you, it's the time now. I'm telling you now you're going to release more things over to the order of the Lord, trusting Him with a greater trust that you may move in a greater faith now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I, Allie, I'm telling you, it increases. It increases. We're going to have a Holy Ghost meeting this weekend. It increases. That faith, that anointing that you laid hold on, that you said, Father, I can do this. I want this. I remember, I remember seeing, it was in a meeting. Um, when we were over in the other building, I watched the gift of faith come on Ellie. And she said, I am going to raise finances for the kingdom of God. And I'm telling you, that increases in the name of Jesus Christ, the profitability of it, the strength of it, the ability to give uh, a, with, with a greater abandonment in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to say this, and I got more to say, man, I just, I'm about ready to grab a hold of the the camera right now and start shaking it <clears throat> but I just feel this very strong I that's why I wanted to address Allie because I know she's watching you know when you begin to cry out to God Lord use me this way I want the gift of faith or Lord use me this way I want to be used by you to reach the lost I, I want to reach them one by one it can be from oh, Lord I want to reach the lost one by one or Lord I want to you give me the gift of faith or it can be Lord I want I want you to use me in evangelism and or, Lord I want you to use me in, in church ministry in a great way I want you to use me in prophecy whatever it may be if you lay hold of it and then you walk it out and you give yourself to it and you don't do it by the arm of flesh but you understand this is a life of the spirit this is a life of Christ this is the realm of the anointing and you learn how to walk in the spirit and rely upon the living God to do it it explodes in your life. It explodes in your life. 
and these areas that have been weak and these areas that you need strengthening in, these areas that you've been imprisoned against, as it were, you, it, it's been held back from. I'm telling you tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, I, there is an anointing of the Holy Ghost in this place so that you don't have to be held back ever again. I'm telling you right now, you do not have to be held back. You do not have to be shut away from the faith. You may have these things now. You've got to take a hold of it in such a way that says, I want this. When this anointing comes upon you, it's not some frivolous thing. It's not just some just passing idea, some faddish emotion. It is a commitment. It is a consecration. And I think that just about everybody in this place knows about commitment, consecration, and you signed up to go to four years of, of, of college and some people even here signed up for more than that and you, you give yourself something you gave yourself so something holy consecrated yourself to it and it was hard and it was laborious and it was challenging but how about doing that with an anointing that comes upon you there's not a single person that God will refuse and 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 will be left unrewarded who goes after God like that with, with an anointing that comes upon them. Huh? And you're just seeking, you're just hungry, you're just wanting to be used by God. You, you, and, uh, the more you can love, the more that you're willing to let the Holy Ghost love through you, the more it's, you're going to be able to connect with the supply of the Spirit that is in this place. If you have a problem connecting with the Holy Ghost and love, let me tell you, you want to get that fixed tonight. You want to get that because it's going to stop you from moving forward. If you've got suspicion and criticism and accusation and high-mindedness going on in your life, that's a realm of hate and darkness. It will shut you out from God. When you walk in, in love and you, you walk in love, you have a great honor and affection for, author, for the authority in the house, for the anointing of the Lord, for the supply of the Spirit. You've got a yieldedness a, and a submissiveness there. And we're just with that, you're just going to have the things of God. It's not, even, it's not hard at all. It's just, it just happens. It just happens. It's just there. So let me tell you how to fix that. You just begin to say, Holy Spirit, let your love flow through me. I give myself to letting your love flow through me. I only want your love in me and, and flowing through me. Feel me right now. And, and, and the Lord sees the seriousness of it, and you can step over into the faith realm of it. I, I've stepped over into the faith realm of it that as soon as I say, Holy Spirit, let your love flow through me, it's immediately, it's instantly. I know Father has that for everybody. Listen, I grew, I matured into this. You must grow and you must mature into it. You hear me? You're, you, get, you get a commitment to it. With a commitment, God gives you the supply of grace to be able to do it. But then you must be then, give yourself over to it, to doing it, having, giving place to these things in your life. So as Paul said, the grace of God was not bestowed upon me in vain, but I labor more than them all. Well, whatever the Lord is, give, give, gives to you, it can't just be some passion, passing fad. Well, you know, I had that for a while, and that didn't work out. My goodness. When you tasted these things and you have in your life, it, it just continues to explode. You love it. There's nothing better. There's nothing better than the power of God surging through your life. So we want these things for you. There, there, God wants to have... There are more people here in this house that Father wants functioning and flowing in the gift of faith. For me, I just want them all. I ha I'm just going to have them all. I have, I have been used by the Lord in every gift of the Spirit that I've found named in the, in, the, in the New Testament. And I want more of it. Well, then I need to be consecrated to it. And I hope you can see I'm consecrated to it. Hallelujah. Huh? I want you to be consecrated to these things. If it's prophecy, wait on prophecy. Well, what does that mean? Committed to it. Giving yourself to it. Huh? <laughs> I prayed and I cried out, God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Let somebody become so skilled in music that loves you, that knows how to flow in the anointing, that you may communicate through them the sounds of heaven that never been heard on earth. I saw, I personally saw, and I'm not just saying this as a proud daddy, I personally saw the, the first development of that as I listened to Joshua's doctorate recital. I'm, I turned, I'm just like, this is it. I mean, he had to do a bunch of things because he had to prove all of the various different techniques that are demanded for him to get his doctorate. It's the skill set of knowing all these various different things in that discipline. But he did it in such a way you could feel the anointing. 
And I'm going, oh, what happens when that instrument, when that highly skilled life of consecration is fully handed over to the master? I'm, at, I'm talking to you. I'm talking as a proud daddy, too, but I'm also talking to you. It's an example that I have to give what happens when you allow God to, to finally hone you and refine you and develop you in the realms of the spirit because you wait upon your gifting. People talk about the anointing that is in, in the prophet TV's life. What they don't talk about is him giving himself to 10 to 12 hours of prayer a day. Because I ask people to pray for an hour and they go like, you got to be kidding me. One person came to me and said, now let's be honest here. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's be honest. What, you say you pray an hour? What's the problem? I can't get past 30 minutes. Well, grow and mature, man. All that's going on is, behold how small your spirit is inside you. Behold how infant you are. Oh, I'm leaving now. I'm gone. Because I'm not going to take a direction. You can tell me I got to grow mature. Eureka. <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, everybody's got to grow and mature. You got to get developed. How do you get developed? Huh? Come on. It doesn't matter what discipline that it is. It doesn't matter what discipline it is. It doesn't matter what with academic sports, whatever it is. And then we just went to the Lord to, you know, well, it's all by grace. Yeah, it is all by grace. He's given us the opportunity and the privilege to be able to come here and give ourselves continually to these things. Jesus' name. The power of God's here. What do you want? It's kind of like, you know, you know, his father's just like, what would you like to have? And then he might answer, well, what's available? And then he would answer, anything you want. Name it. Just name it. We'll get it for you right now. What I want, what I want, I want the uttermost parts of the earth for my possession. I want the heathen for my inheritance. You know why I want that? Because that's what Jesus wants. That's what Father gave to Jesus, and I'm co-inheritor with Jesus, and the Spirit of the Son within me is in total agreement with what Jesus wants because it's the same Spirit that he has. I don't have to make believe this. I don't have to think about this. It's so deep inside of me that it burns like a fire. It's, it's a demand upon my soul. I don't have to try to remember. I'll wake up with it in the morning. I'll go to sleep with it tonight. I think about it through the day. I'm telling you, this heavenly vision will keep me from every earthly interest. It will keep me from every earthly affection because I am consumed with the fire of God. I'm consumed with the purposes of God. I'm yes. telling you, people, I'm inviting you. I'm challenging you once again. Give yourself over wholly given to God, wholly given service. Have a wholly given service. Have a wholly given life. Have a wholly given place within every area of your life. And that Father just fills you. You don't want nothing for yourself. You know what the Lord wants you to do right now? You know what he wants you to do? Right now. Agree. I want you to say, agree. agree. No, I'm, I'm just talking to you. <laughs> agree, agree, agree. I keep that kind of rough. Try it one more time. Agree. <laughs> That's it. Don't you let nothing hinder you? I agree. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Praise God. You just stay under every kind of authority you got. Uh, don't you despise any authority in Jesus' name. Uh,
because you're supposed to be prophesying every night, flowing in the word of knowledge and giving yourself to those things. When you get hit by it, it's yours. But if it's going to be honed and developed, huh? the grace of God giving it to you and it sets down upon you and the anointing's yours, now what are you going to do with it? Now what are you going to do with it? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everybody stand with me. Dear people, I recognize that everyone's got to get up and go to work in the morning. And I want you to step into a revival fire where faith will so burn in your life that we could have something similar to the Cane Ridge revival here. But greater. We can have something similar to those revivals where men would go to work hard labor in the, in the coal mines. They'd get up, they had to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. They wouldn't get in until 1. And then they'd be back, right back in the meeting the next night. But they ran in a faith realm. It's a faith realm. It's a faith realm. It's not a complaining realm. It's like, oh, we stayed in church too late. When you do that, it's, well, it works counter. You would rather say, oh, we stayed in church too late. Which church didn't go on so late? If you didn't do that, if you said, Lord, give me strength to be able to go to the meeting and then still be able to be refreshed of God, help us to understand the value of it. Oh, my, 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 my. A whole, you, would get a, a, you would get the door of opportunity. <laughs> And the door of blessing would open up before you. Hallelujah. Just learning to walk in this glory. Listen, the fire of his presence is here tonight. The glory of his grace is here tonight. Listen, I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm going to announce these things to you. I know that for some of you it was a little shaky tonight. I knew for some of you it was, it was, it was rocking, your, rocking your boat a bit, okay? But listen to me. Father's laying a foundation that has to be laid. Father is calling us to a place that we've got to be willing to come. If we're willing to do this, I'm telling you, he will sovereignly move with a great and outpouring of his spirit. And it should be like a rushing mighty wind. I'm telling you, God has purposed to cause rain, the latter rain, the glory of heaven to fall upon this place and to fall upon our lives to once again by storm and by force take over this whole city moved by his glory throughout this land. I am so desperate. I am so pers I am I'm so desperate. I'm so desperate for these things. I'm so, I'm so passionate about these things. I, I pray in Jesus' name you will join with me in my passion. You'll join with me in this heavenly vision to have it God's way so that the glorious things of heaven might be seen in the earth again. I don't believe that Southern California is lost forever. I believe that God wants to move by His Spirit in Southern California. I believe that God wants to out, do a great outpouring that is greater than any other outpouring ever in any other time in the past. He's looking, so, he's looking for us. Father's looking for us to respond. We say, Father, we ask you now in the name of Jesus, raise up laborers. Father, we see that the harvest truly is plenteous. Father, I ask you to raise up laborers just like Jesus. Father, I ask you now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that your fiery, passionate word of life, that the fiery, passionate word of the Holy Ghost would burn in the hearts of the people here in this church. That it won't just be a small little voice, oh God, but it will be a passionate cry, a thunderous sound from heaven coming up out of our innermost being. I pray in Jesus' name. I have found again and again 
that when I get really passionate about something, if I get really passionate, if I get really provoked, and I speak something out, it happens. I want you to understand that God is a part of that kind of fire. He's a part of that kind of truth. He's a part of that kind of petition. It's so real to you. It's, just, it's got to be. I cannot wait. I remember hearing Rodney give his testimony talking about how when he got just so desperate he began to cry out to God for the fire that I related so much to that because over and again every moment of desperation every moment of passion in my life I found that there is a it's almost like it's a realm that God brings us to and it's it can't be denied it's an undeniable request And I pray in Jesus' name that in this church and in this place, such a fire will burn within your belly, within your heart. I warn you this, I warn you this. You can't have other fires. You cannot have other passions. You cannot have other purposes and have this one singular passion that I'm talking about. It won't be, it can't be mixed. The, the other passions will just, will cause the fire of God to be less, to burn less, as it were. It's a weak way of saying it. Other interest, other passions, drowned out, probably a better way. Such a cry. But we're going to have this. We're going to have it. You're going to get past your sin. You're going to get past your weights. Because you're going to get captivated by the working, the power of the living God and the purposes of God for your life. You're going to get past all these distractions because you're going to begin to understand the righteousness which is by faith. You're going to get jarred. You're going to get, you're going to get touched by the same impact that God touched Noah because I'm telling you, there's a greater impact than what Noah had. You're going to get in touched and impacted by the same impact that Abraham had when he was willing to say goodbye to it all. And did indeed. Wasn't just willing, did it. And went from one great willingness to the ultimate willingness. Yeah, I'll give you my son too, Papa. I believe you. You can have anything I have. What have you asked me, Jewish? Tonight, Father, just asking you for your heart. Father, tonight, he's just asking you for your heart. He's just asking you for your affections. He's just asking you for all your interest. And if you'll, if you'll turn them, if you'll turn those things towards him, he'll show you great and mighty things which you have not known, which no one has known. The Holy Ghost has come to reveal to us everything that belongs to the Father, to show us the things that are to come. I tell you tonight, I prophesy this to you. There will be a greater expression of love towards each person in this place than has ever happened before because the grace of God is here to make it happen for anyone who's willing to receive. God is going to make it so easy. He's going to show you how easy it is. There's going to be a greater manifestation of divine power. And God is going to make it so easy for you to flow and function in the gifts of the Spirit, to lift your heart and praise and worship. God's going to fill the atmosphere of this place with such Holy Ghost conviction that sin will not be able to stand. Will not be able to stand. 
it will cry out. It will run to the mercy seat. It will cry out for the blood application of Jesus Christ upon it. Bonagila must go to England. Father, tonight I pray over these people and I ask you now in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Father, in your mercy and your grace, cause every heart to be willing, cause every heart to be willing to obey, to hear and to hearken into your voice. Father, in your mercy and your grace, flood the lives of every person here with showers of blessings. Father, I ask you in your mercy and your grace to overwhelm them with your divine power and your glory. Take hold of them and arrest them, O oh God, for your divine purposes, I pray. I'm going to address you. Will you be willing to allow God to have his way? Will you be willing to fully turn your back on sin? Will you be willing to fully turn your back on the things of selfish interest? Would you be willing to fully give yourself over to those things which God has freely given you? Would you be willing to leave where you've been living and come out? Go into a place that only the Lord could lead you one step at a time to go there? Doing it His way. I'm going to pray for everybody who's been troubled in your spirit. You've been troubled in your spirit. You know that there needs to be a greater consecration in your life to the Lord. You know that you've had a hard, you have a hard time yielding to the anointing. You have a hard time yielding to the spirit. You have a hard time yielding. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to lay hands on you. I just, I'm calling you to come stand before the Lord. Because as I begin to ask the Lord to do some things for you, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say very clearly to me, wait a minute, they need to do some things for me. David, I'm going to ask you why you don't come. I'm going to ask you because you have a hard time yielding to the Holy Ghost. I want to know why don't you come. And I'm saying that because I'm so earnest for you, men. You want to be responsive to the Lord. I don't want to have to do that. It just, I would see that if there was anybody in this place, you should have been one of the first people to come. You have to ask yourself, why not? What's going on with you? You have to let God search your heart because there's a call of God, an opportunity that you have. You don't want to miss out on it. I mean, if I would have pictured in my, there was a few people here tonight that I could picture in my mind that really need to take hold of God. And, you know, I don't like to force people to come. I don't like to call people out because then it's me. It's not them. It's, it's me calling them and they're not responding to the Holy Ghost. But I get so passionate for people. I'm just like, why? Why? Because, it, I, you know, it's just like I know what Father wants. And, and it's so easy to have what it is he wants for our lives. Why would we choose other things? How could you be raised in a place like this where the anointing of God exists and you have less than, less than a great passion for God? I don't understand that. So you have to just pray for me. You have to pray for me because I'm impatient with that. I can't. It hurts me. It hurts me. To see people separated out from the anointing. Do not know how to respond, respond to the anointing. Imprisoned against the anointing. They don't know how to respond. I want that yoke to be broken. I want that yoke to be broken. It's a yoke. It's a yoke. Do you understand that? It's a yoke. It's a yoke. I want your family, just 
Stuart, just bring your family together. I, I just want to pray for your family, man. God's got, God's, God's got such a call for your family. God, God, such a call on your family, and I know you're earnest for your family, Stuart. We're going to pray for your family. I know the heavenly call that is upon your life. Stuart, I know the heavenly call that's there. God purposed that you would be one who would be, as it were, a battering ram in the kingdom of God. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say it to me tonight. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say he's never stepped into his anointing. He's never stepped into his call. I heard the battering ram. An authority in the Spirit to be able to knock down every hindrance, to bust down every fortified thing that Satan would set up. Do you know that when you have people that have those kinds of anointings, you're going to have breakthroughs on every hand? Dear people, I, want you to, I don't want you to think that you, you're standing up here, you're being totally recognized by the Lord. I'm telling you, as I said, I don't even know that I'm going to lay hands on anyone tonight because, because when I begin to ask God to do some things for you, the Lord spoke to me and said, well, they need to do some things for me. So you're, you're, it, what's going on here tonight, by and large, is just is you're standing up here. It's between you and Jesus. But I'm telling you, he sees it. I'm telling you right now, Renee, you are standing before the living God. He sees you right now. And he's going to honor your willingness to live a holy, consecrated life, to understand what it means to flow and operate in the anointing.
I just lift your hands towards heaven. I have discovered again and again that he sent his word and healed them. I have discovered again and again that when I stand back and let God move, he does great things. But I want you to discover that too. The Spirit of the Lord is here for you, to touch you, to strengthen you, to empower you, to embolden you, to equip you, to give you whatever you ask at any moment, at any time, wherever you are. The fire of God is ready and available to be poured out upon you at the asking. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Oh, Michaela, Michaela, come here, dear. I want you to just walk across to here and just want you to lay hands on everybody that you go by. Quickly, just lay hands upon them. Walk by and lay hands on them. That's, that's good enough. Go on. That's good enough. Just lay hands on quickly. Just lay hands on. Michaela, come back this way. Come back this way. I want you to spend a little bit more. I want you to come over here. I want you to spend a little bit more time. Go here, right there. Start right there. Oh, mama, mani keshe prata yena. Go right there to Renee, right there to Renee. Jesus. Say, Karra, mama, 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 Ah, Father, we thank you for the anointing that destroys and breaks off every yoke that removes every hindrance. Father, we thank you for the flow, the kind form of the Holy Ghost to the life of your people. Thank you, Father God, for the rivers. Oh, say, I say, show me. Thank you for your Holy Ghost and fire. Every yoke, broken, 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 in Jesus' name. Broken. Broken, 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 my Jackie Tora, broken, my money case today. Every hindrance removed out of the way. Father, thank you for the flow of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the praises. Thank you, Father God, for your authority, your power at work in our lives, oh God. God, I'm going to save everything for me. 
I just want you, I want you to lift your voice with me. Just lift your voice and cry out to the Lord. Lift your voice and cry out. Lift your voice and cry out. Cry out. Cry out to a living God. Cry out to the living God. Healed, 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 healed. Socorro, 
Now, people, this is how we live. This is how we live. It's not what I do on Wednesday nights. This is how I live. <laughs> You foul spirit of hell. In Jesus' name. No, you don't allow that thing back. Don't allow that thing back. Don't allow it back. Do not allow it back. Do not allow it back. Because it has rage. It will destroy you. Now it left. Don't allow it back. It is the resolve of your will. You, nor no one else, can afford hell. The devil, you must, everybody in there must, must understand, the devil has set himself against us and all humanity to destroy ourselves in hell, to destroy our souls in hell. He is at war against us, and if you do not think he is tonight, understand. Fleshly lust war against our soul for the purpose of destroying us, destroying us. Praise God for the anointing that can drive out evil spirits and break off the yoke. But you've got to recognize. You have to recognize. 
And each one of us have a place where we have to stand up and say no to the powers of darkness. No, you can't have me. You can't have place in my life. The Lord strengthened you. The Lord has strengthened you. He will strengthen you. He will strengthen you. He will strengthen you. He will strengthen you. You felt his presence many times because his love says, This is how good it is to be with me. That's what he does. Hallelujah. Glory, Ann, you're looking good tonight. You're looking better <laughs> over there. Oh, she's a good little Best of kind. The Lord graces us many, many times. Over and again. Over and again. Because He just loves us. He loves us so much. He'll tell us over and again, isn't it, doesn't it feel better to live in my presence? And it, uh, and it doesn't say it with words, but it just overwhelms us. And it's like, it's just as good as words. And we're like, oh, this is amazing. And he's just inviting us to have it all the time. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, how marvelous is my Savior's love for me. To live that way. Come here, just lift your hands towards heaven. Come here. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. It's a little sister here. Fire of God upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, from the crown of your head to the soul of your feet, I take you by the power of the living God and baptize you down in the realms of the Spirit of the living God. In Jesus' name. Out of your belly flows these rivers of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name mighty name in Jesus mighty name in the living name of the living God in the name of the living God from this day forward you begin to know the one who created the heavens and the earth who formed them by his word hallelujah <laughs> Nanda ye ye kaya, nanda ye ya kaya. Malalaile, malalani ala na ya la yenea. This is how we live. Malalai la ye la la yina. Zogoro di raba ba yina lolo tuna na ne na na mane no 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 mane ya. Hallelujah. Not to worry, daughter of the Lord. Father's making you strong. He's fitting your hands to the battle. The enemy would not be able to overwhelm you for long. Uh -uh. You'll have total mastery. Yes. Oh, yeah. You'll have total mastery. I tell you, you will. You'll have total mastery. Why? For your heart is dedicated to it. Why? Because your heart is consecrated to it. Why? Because you don't want it any other way. That's why you'll have total mastery. And Satan will come and he will find nothing in you. He'll find nothing to be able to manipulate you with. He'll find nothing to be able to draw you. No device or weapon he can use against you will be able to prosper. I don't like the idea that Satan can any way take advantage of me and get something over on me or has a weapon that can be used against me effectively. Hallelujah. And I'm Mongjikaranaya. And I'm Serenayati. And I'm a Salakanesa. And I'm a Mongadarani Kataya. And I'm a And I'm a Sereni Kaya. And I'm a Shapiri Shunaminda. And I'm a Mongolagadesh Mangadeya. Sunangaleyato. Hallelujah. And neither shall you. And neither shall you. Now, I'm telling you right now, dear, dear people, you listen to me. This is not emotionalism. It's the way we live in the spirit. 
songs and hymns and spiritual songs. It's a shout and a cry and a dance and a holler. Hallelujah. And everybody I've ever known that lived like this and was raised like this did great things. I'll tell you right now, this is how Reinhardt Bunky was raised. This is how the men of God and the women of God that were used in the kingdom of God in, the great, in great ways, this is how they were raised. Shouting unto the Lord. Lifting up their voice. I'm talking about the people of signs, wonders, and miracles. This is how they were raised. You want to you you live in this realm, walk in this realm. Ah, give yourself to this realm then. Haramamaneo. 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 Sange karade ete. Sikara manje on a Monday, on a near, on a near, on a near, on a sign on a name. Now, do you realize, do you realize that the Spirit of the Lord just gave you something? Do you realize that? He did. The Lord imparted unto you a strength and an ability to stand against the powers of darkness and the threats of Satan. I want to make sure that you heard the word of the Lord. These things are yours. You say, can it come that easy? Oh, yeah. It's just like salvation, you know. You say, Jesus, <laughs> come save me, and a great miracle takes place. The word of the Lord comes, and you respond. No katina namang jekana mongadea, botati ramasataladea da, is my prophecy language. It's my word of knowledge. I have different languages. I have a miracle language. I have a healing language, I have a get to faith language, I have a praise language, a prayer language. I'll tell you, I got a, I got a shout language. I got Nung Loga Daga Langa Dega Boka Saga Nega Baka Nakadero. Palamangazea. Gotta give you diversities of tongues. Hallelujah. You just learn how that you begin, begin to begin to Bosoramo Nombrevea. You'll explore whole new realms in God. You'll go and search out places that have never been before in God. There are opportunities in God that nobody's laid hold of. I tell you, there's breadth, there's height, there's length. I tell you, there's, a, there's unfathomable things. There's unbelievable things. There's things that you cannot even begin to imagine. It's just all you got to do is go after them with your heart, with your passion. All you got to do is want these things more than anything. Talk about seeking out whole new realms. I'm telling you. If Take the passionate heart, sold out to God. These things are yours if you want them more than anything else. It has no ambition in it, only passion, only desperation, only divine purpose and destiny. This is what you and I were born for. Meet us, 
Mito soye. Mito sayeta. Mito satayete. Mina ne itayin ikana ikamota ikatomonata ikatomonataya ikatomonotaya masata ikatomanandita ene ete ushana eyala manea ushana manea angea yes makea na ate ono koka ni katei Gisana ate, misana taisa, mina ga atane ya tui isadi ala mona ite ya. Ha, mai de ya mama nongi da ya, mai di sa ite kina ni no no mona eche. E no si te, e no si te, e no si te la mangi li masan, manes ota ya romosaya, melo manga ya busai leng de paya. Monge shalom botaya, me shukani inda yata yenekia, o kenasate, manda iti yotaha, yes atona, and yes monte yani, and yes yalamusani, yes manonakani, ya siko de magi kana kasaya tai, yes monda bayana, yes yes lomanai net bosa kani iti, Father thank you, thank you. That as Dwayne gains masteries in the spirit, in every way over himself in life, to completely consecrate himself in every way to you, letting go of the things that he can do of himself, that you have an unlimited, unmeasurable gift of faith for him to call things in by the spirit in the realms of finance. And Father, I thank you that he's going to step into this ability. He's not going to be queasy no more. No more, and he will let go, and watch how great and powerful and mighty this God whom he's called upon, whom he serves, really truly is. Yes. 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 This is what the Lord will do through you. Ha. <laughs> Iko taka nika daka nika doka saga la moka taka naya. Ishikama no gadeya. You shall gain masteries in the gift of faith. Ishikana. You shall. You shall. You shall. You shall. Iko no manje la magala ni shipeya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ora staraninda. Ora staraninga lista peri. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bro staranaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, there shall not be sickness in your spirit. There shall not be sorrow and grief within your spirit. There shall not be those things that would cause you to be in any way irritable or depressed in your spirit. They shall not be there. Then there, neither shall there be sickness in your body. You can work on your body, but it will not change your spirit. But you can give your spirit wholly over to the direction of the of the Holy Ghost, and it will change your body. For if that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and occupies you, you shall also quicken or make alive your mortal body. So you must understand the medicine that you need. Is the joying and the rejoicing, ha? Oh, man, I gotta say today, the 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 medicine that you need is a kindness. God says, God the Holy Ghost says, a kindness, a kindness that rules you. A kindness, a sweetness, a sweetness of spirit will be the ointment salve for your body. And he that commands. Also supplies 
that which you need. So it is not as though that he commanded and said, go find for yourself these things. But he commands them and then when we hear him command it, we respond to him and say to him, yes, then that which we, did, that which we need, that which he commissioned us to have is immediately supplied. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you right now. I thank you, Father, for the anointing that you placed upon Kelly to minister and to preach the gospel. Father, I thank you now in Jesus' name. Kelly, come here. Father, I thank you, God, that Kelly is willing to so give himself over to you. I'm just going to start calling Pastor Kelly. He's so willing to give himself over to you that he would even bury his body, the mark said of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Paul said, when he finally got finished school in the Galatians. Read it again. He said, listen to me, I bear my body at the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, don't give me no more trouble. That's the end. And I, what, could, what greater proofs could there be to bear in our body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ? I don't know what all that was. But I know that God is going to do special signs and wonders through you, Pastor Kelly. I know that Papa is going to do special signs and wonders because you're such an obedient son. But when you obey those that are over in your Lord, you don't obey them, you obey Father. And however you act to those that are over you in the Lord, you act directly to the Father. And I tell you, everybody needs to learn that and understand it. Some people already know it, they know it naturally. Other people have to learn it. Either way, get it. Because it, what I tell you is true. Don't you worry about finances. Don't you worry about money. Don't you worry about these other things. Don't you start putting things upon yourself that God did not put upon you. Somebody said, oh, will you come and do this and go and do that and do the other thing? I said, listen to me. Don't be so busy that when God needs you, you're not available. Don't get so tied down with doing great things for God and building things and on great missions, God really needs you and then you're not available. People start getting these, all these great ideas. Oh, you stand in. I'm going to tell you how the word of knowledge will come. The word of knowledge will come because you're standing there worshiping and praising God and lost and carried away, captivated by in the spirit, can't even, don't even find your own thoughts anymore and then it comes. <laughs> Oh, you do, wait, that's how you do things. My soil with Mahalo. This is how we live. This is not what we do on Wednesday night or Sunday morning or Sunday. This is how we live. And we want you to live this way. This is the righteousness which is by faith. This is the life of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Catherine, you're looking really good tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Father, I thank you for the anointing on Catherine's life. <laughs> Special works of grace. Special works of grace. Special works of grace. I thank you, Father, for the anointing on every person in this place. Special works of grace. I tell you, don't worry in well-doing. You shall reap if you faint not. I'm telling you right now, don't you think for a second that God has left you out. He's not left anybody out. He's, he's, he's brought everybody in. <laughs> he personally went and brought everybody in and he's given everybody an equal opportunity. He's just looking for those who will lay hold Lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on this life of God. Lay hold on these things of heaven. Lay hold.
Lay hold on these things in Jesus' name. Ha ni gasuta ngani ana la nakatia na no mono. Ha. Loba sarani ando loba kusita. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Roba baboti ha. Halabo rasada. Halabo shatana ne. Well, there is no closing these services at all. I never intend to, never mean to, and that's why I really don't. Just tell people to hug each other, kind of thing. Listen, we need a financial miracle. We're going to have one. And you're going to have one. And I just want you to know, dear people, a big part of why, I want you to understand this, a big part of why we bring people in on a continual basis is we want to make sure that we as a church are continually dispersing abroad in tithes and offerings. We, we, we not only call people to do that individually, we do it collectively as a church. We have found that there is a great prosperity and a great gain in sacrificial giving. That means you give when you can't afford it. I'll just tell you like this. There's been many times where ministries have come and there was nothing at all in the bank. And I was not going to in any way believe that money can tell me what to do. I'm going to honor them. I'm going to give them a love gift, you know. Are you with me? And I'm not going to give them some little love gift. You know what I'm saying? Did I say... I'm going to give you a love gift. I, just, I love you a little bit. And so, Father has blessed us and he's prospered us. And he leaves us under the harness of faith. He leaves us in the harness of not being able to possibly see a way that we can do it of ourselves. If you don't like that, you won't like walking with God. It was all fine and well and everything was going so beautifully for Peter until he looked up at the circumstances and saw what was really in front of him. And then he started sinking for fear. Huh? It's all very, very exciting until you realize where you're at. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, and so the Lord keeps training us. And... Uh, when I first asked the Lord, I asked him, I said, Lord, I want to learn how to walk on the water. I did not realize what I was asking and how he was going to teach me how to walk on the water. And, uh, you know, Mel Tari used to come down to the church quite a bit. Mel Tari's the one who wrote the book, Like a Mighty Wind, The Revival of Indonesia. In fact, you guys took her up to Mel's, didn't you? took Deborah up to Mills. And one of the beautiful things, I love the story of when they were on their way to go minister to a village and a, and a great flood came and a river separated them from the, the, the village and the Lord entrusted them with the ability to walk upon the water. It was a great revival. There's going to be greater revivals. Indonesia is a target. We will see a great revival in Indonesia. Iri and Jaya. We're still believing God for Iri and Jaya this year. I mean, we're going to have the greatest miracles that, is, that we've ever been a part of in Iri and Jaya. We know it. I know that's why what Tim was just calling me a little bit ago. I, I don't know if, if it's actually going to work out this year. I believe in God that it will. I know there's great hindrances trying to stop us. But Father will have his way. And I think one thing I do is I'm willing to go and I'm willing to move out. I'm, I'm, and, I, and I go after with all of my heart. But I let God do it. Let God make the way. I want you to let God make the way for you tonight. I want you to communicate to, with us, hook up with us for the miracle that we need, the miracle of faith that we need on so many different levels in ministry to ultimately do what God has called us to do because I'm telling you right now, 
for us to do what God has called us to do, we must move in faith. It doesn't work any other way. You're never going to be able to do what God called you to do, what God's purposed you to do, until you know how to move and walk in faith. And it's beautiful because we've begun that way. The righteousness, which is by faith. When faith came. Hallelujah. And everybody that Jesus said, your faith has made you whole, or be it according to your faith, it was all faith based upon Him. It was their faith that they had in Him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So why don't you worship the Lord with your offering, with your giving. Hook up with us with a miracle. Here's how it works. The Lord says, as you give, He will give to you. Press down, shaking together and running over. That's what He said. He said, if you sow generously, you reap generously. Come here. What's going on? I don't know what happened to the mic. Bring me the mic. What's happening? I just felt the Lord really pressing on my heart about he has just poured out everything he has onto us. He's poured out his love, his joy, and it is available for us all of the time, every single day, every single minute, every single second, and that we just need to set our heart on the things of him and not get distracted with the cares or things of this world because they are temporary and they will soon pass away, but his ways, his love, his joy will last forever, and it is just such a wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know the, uh, the the wonderful gift of prophecy to be able to step into prophecy to be able to begin to function in that gifting such a honor and I pray that every one of you give yourself to these things and Angelica now you give yourself to this this realm you give this self to this, yourself to this realm by just pouring out your heart to the Lord just like you just poured out your heart on his behalf and what will happen as you do as you give hours to this as you give yourself to these things to become skilled in them by the spirit of the Lord there will be no limits to how God will use you now. There will be no, no limits how God will use you. These are the great days of the moving of the Spirit of the Lord. These are the days that God is going to begin to bring on the scene those who seemingly have been hidden away and obscured from the eyes of men, but never obscured or hidden away from God. They've been in a secret place where he shaped them and formed them and fashioned them. And he calls them forth and he raises them up. And Father will make the mighty men and the mighty women of the kingdom and of the spirit to stand up in this generation. And my heart and my passion is set that every one of you will be one of those people. Hallelujah. Amen. Make sure that you hug everybody before you leave. 